Dear doctors and students, a very warm welcome on this Homeopathy 360 platform. Myself, Dr. Rajesh, I am one of the team members of Homeopathy 360. I welcome you all once again on this webinar platform. Today, again, we have a two very good personality with us who is going to speak on different topics and enlighten you and enhance your knowledge on different topics. Meanwhile, we start our webinar. I request you to please settle down and in a meanwhile, we start the webinar for you. To guide you further, we have joined our presenter today, Dr. Yashika Aroda. So I request Dr. Yashika Aroda uh, to please guide the audience further and start the proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rajesh, sir. So hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar by Team Homeopathy 360. A very warm afternoon to all our esteemed guests, our speakers, and colleagues present with us. Hope you all are safe and doing well during this lockdown period. For all of you joining us and already joined, I, Dr. Yashika Aroda, heartily welcome you all. I will be the moderator of today's session for all of you. Before we begin, let me introduce you to, the, uh, to my team, Homeopathy 360. So we have Dr. Rajesh with us, who, uh, whom you've just listened to. He'll be uh, there behind the scenes, who will be, uh, uh, be working behind the scenes while we conduct this webinar. Dr. Rajesh, welcome. You'll be with us at the backend system to ensure that the webinar runs smooth and you face no issue. And for those people who are new to this platform or new to this software, let me introduce you to the software that you have a right. Uh, you have a chat box on your screens on the right side, right corner, wherein you can type your questions and send to us by pressing the button next to the box. You can also raise your hand option. You have a raise your hand option on the upper corner, right corner. So you can uh, raise your uh, uh, queries to this. We will be discussing a, uh, the queries and the uh, question answer session at the end of the webinar when both these speakers have finished. So uh, this is all I wanted to brief you about. Also, I want to brief you about the uh, uh, about our platform that is Homeopathy 360. Homeopathy 360 is an exceptional education hub and an online portal. Which, we, which is being designed by vision group of companies for each generation of homeopaths, where they try to organize each and every single information related to homeopathy and make it universally accessible on the website www.homeopathy360.com. So on behalf of vision group and our whole team, Homeopathy 360, I also want to invite all the esteemed homeopaths who are present with us right now to contribute your knowledge as well as your experiences in your area of expertise. Whatever you want, whether articles, presentations, videos, lectures, uh, uh, blogs, everything is being invited for the portal and uh, uh, so that we can promote and broadcast your talent as help out in uh, to make homeopathy an evidence-based science it, it constitutes all kinds of course materials career opportunities job uh, job vacancies latest events latest updates webinars and everything which is being updated all over the world on homeopathy so uh, i hope uh, uh, we, uh, we we get a good response from the audience for the website as well so without wasting any more time let me introduce you to the dignified speakers of today's webinar. We have two speakers today, our two esteemed speakers uh, with us today, Dr. Akhilesh Khan, sir, as well as Dr. Anil Acharya, ma'am. So uh, the, uh, the topic for today's webinar is cure and advance and excellent contribution of our master. We have Professor Dr. Akhilesh Khan, sir. He's Professor Emeritus, AHMC Nagpur, Maharashtra, presently. He was a former administrator, principal, head of the PG department of the ending homeopathic medical college, West Bengal. So we have him here, sir. Welcome. This topic for today will be homeopathic approach to raise the immunity to prevent epidemic diseases. And he'll be discussing the rational approach as per the Gorgonon of medicine and other textbooks of Master Hanneman. We also have Dr. Anita Acharya, ma'am, with us. He is the assistant professor in the Department of Materia Medica from MPK Homeopathic Medical College, Jaipur. She will be discussing on the uh, on the uh, uh, Kali group, and we have both of them here. Welcome, Dr. Anita, ma'am, and Dr. Akhilesh, sir. 
so now i hand over the uh, pres uh, hand over the uh, webinar to uh, dr akhilesh khan sir for the uh, lecture let's begin without wasting any time uh, madam what happened my slides are uploading slides are not yet uploaded so it's sir it's okay it's okay it will take what time. you can what you can do is uh, you have a uh, option on your screen uh, beside the audio option of screen share screen share option what is this i have slide uploading it will take time what is the screen share option screen share option is coming uh, beside the audio and video option you have no that screen uh, only have four options screen share yeah just on this and uh, open your presentation in the powerpoint only and then uh, you, uh, it will be visible to all <laughs> Hello. Okay, sir. I request you to open the webcam. Ah, uh, screen. Uh, wait. Okay, okay. Screen share. Whether I have to go to the screen share option or? Yes, uh, because you have disconnected, so it again take much time to have the uploading in the PPT. So I request you to just click on the screen sharing option. Yes, I have clicked. Nothing is coming. Just move your cursor on the window of your. and you will find next to the mic you have option of screen sharing or at the top of your screen yes yes i have seen it yes so kindly click on that not nothing yes, is yes. yeah yes it is it is now shared so uh, professor dr akhilesh khan sir your screen is now shared i request you to minimize the web browser so that your ppt can be seen by the audience Yes, kindly open your PPT. We are able to see your desktop screen. Yes, kindly maximize it. dear audience we are about to start in a minute just in the settings in aspect of the ppt just wait wait, wait 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 it's okay it's okay sir just okay. take your time and set the slides okay thank you cholo because i am not it's part in the computer to launch in this way no it's okay sir it's okay you you have done almost all the work and now just uh, request to maximize the things and please start the session okay now it is visible yes 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 it is very much visible and uh, akhilesh sir i request you you can see there is a pop up on your window where you will find there is a option of stop sharing and hide the sharing click on this hide the sharing option yes 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 it's very much fine okay so we all set to go uh, uh, dr akhilesh sir please start Thank your you session sir. sorry for late because of that i am not well conversant to the these sorts of applications through computer and very much uh in betters in my zoom application so it is something new so my audience so i start my topic today's topic is homeopathic approach to raise the immunity to prevent epidemic diseases already i have told you that earlier that the cure in advance already i have 
deliver the speech in different platform so this is my something new so it has some relations with this my viewers most of your students practitioners in homeopathy in the country i had also abroad at first i convey you all congratulation to come here and i pay my regards and thankful i pay my regards and convey my thanks to the b join and company especially monis join who invite me to take part in this seminar and really it is wonderful for the uh, this period of lock time when the entire world is suffering from a panic of a uh, pandemic disease ranging around and entire world is under lockdown and so it is very easiest way to give informations to our students practitioners and others in my introduction already given by rakesh and others jessica that i am dr akhilesh khan from kolkata but at present i am staying at nagpur as you know i am attached to homeopathy medical college at nagpur as a professor emeritus guest professor i was the principal charge of principal of the and homeopathy medical college and apart from that i used to give another introduction of myself i am the first batch of bhms in india because i took admission in bhms in 1975 at calcutta university was the first in india who introduced bhms dt course i at calcutta homeopathy medical college is the oldest institution in asia as you know and i am proud enough always i used to say that i had the opportunity to take the dust of the lotus feet of dr bk bose who was the direct student of the kent i saw him in my pre medical course and he gave some informations in his own practice and he told some directions how a doctor should approach to a patient also i am the direct student of sk dube who textbook is very much popular in homeopathic academy and also i am the uh, i was very much close to dr mohendra singh and another dr bolanath chakraborty as you know bolanath chakraborty was the physician of the queen of london he was a physician of the palestinian leader arafat so many followers in the world lota mangeshkar amita bachchan all of them were very close to bolanath chakraborty jessica mukherjee was very close to him i was very close to him because of that i am the first batch and going to him uh, i took admission in homeopathy and and therefore i am still i am running 64 and today i am giving my some approach of the homeopathic approach in this community with this words the truth the mortals need us blessed to make and keep the always slightly cover her but need not put it if my viewers this is the saying as you know the killer's poet wrote by master hanuman in the first edition of the organelles today we are we are seeing there's a pandemic disease hanging around the entire world So what is the truth behind it? Though any man told in respect to the first edition, in respect to the other schools of medicines, but I think that is very pertinent today. Even today, that poem is very pertinent. Though he removed this poem in second edition, or he suffered. So my students and viewers, who are listening my lecture and view my lecture, please be courageous, get to be wise, and please keep on trust to find out the truth. because truth is not deep almighty god gave us the homeopathy for the natural diseases almighty god gifted us the homeopathy for the natural diseases this is the truth behind us so with this words again i would like to quote another things from the barnard saw a doctor's dilemma it's a very popular book at that time with the barnard saw was a satirist he was a dramatist he was he was a very popular writer at that time in last part of the century last first part of the last century and from this one are fascinations of the epidemics i just i like to quote from him the barnard sort the doctor's dilemma the very popular book i my students and viewers since i am an academic person i will try to establish my laws and principles as laid down by master hanuman in our of medicines Alas, as well as in the friends of an chronic disease, obviously I'll refer sometimes and read out exactly the what the stalwart said in different articles. So therefore, sometimes I'll read out the books. Similarly, for starting my lecture, I am start. I am just quoting from.
from the fascines and epidemics if you get time obviously you have lot of time today and in this period of lock time try to read out this book the doctor's dilemma that garnered so the fascines and epidemics a demand however can be inculcated this thoroughly understood by fashionable tradesmen please listen we find no difficulty in persuading their customers to renew their articles that are not worn out and buy things they do not want by making doctors tradesmen we compel them to learn the tricks of trade consequently we find that fashions of the year include treatments operations and particularly drugs as well as hats sleeves bellards and games tonsils vermifor appendices ivulus even ovaries are sacrificed because it is the fashion to get them cut out and because the operations are highly profitable the psychology of fashion becomes a pathology or the cases have every year of being genuine fashion after all are only induced epidemics fashion after all again i repeat are only induced epidemics providing that epidemics can be induced by tradesmen and therefore my doctors my students very few days back united states of america even the president uh, uh, claimed that it is a man made epidemic it is a man made epidemic it is a frankenstein as produced by the china therefore they are claiming it is china virus china virus i do not know whether it is a man made or that it is a prepared by any genetically configured uh, viruses but but the thing is that what you are feeling what the common man feeling today whether it is a natural or a man made but i again i prove that it is man made because of that there are so many consequences of the so called civilizations as you know in the first introduction of the first part master hanneman in the introduction in the first paragraph of the introduction master hanneman told that how the man in the under influence of the nature the diseases were very rare since the inception if he if, if even adam sort the first man in oben since then man is suffering by psychologically by any by morally they are suffering from the diseases but the so long the civilization progresses demand the need of the medicine increases my students my viewers so with this words i would like to uh, start my program with hanneman and banner so homeopathy is the product of the epidemic diseases but applicable in all diseases in all circumstances it is it is my premises i would like to place before you my students by viewers please think over the matters homeopathy is the product of the epidemic diseases but applicable in all diseases in all circumstances are you agree with me or not i do not know but i would like to put it by the way of inductive logic that homeopathy is established homeopathy is established by the inductive logic so it is application of the homeopathy is a deductive one so homeopathy it is my premises students as the first premises only premises by which you came that master Hanne, master hanneman as in aphorism 926 what he told a weak and dynamic affection is permanently extinguished in the living organism by strong or one if the latter while differing in kind is very similar to the former in manifestation my students here you should consider my viewers those who are clinical practitioners you please follow the organomic edition because all the learning is the only only text the rules and regulations is the code of ethics which guide us how to practice my teacher dr dube my teacher dr mohinder singh and dr s p ray always the trust and organon therefore sometimes we deviate from our topics we deviate from our practices so i would like to establish today among you the viewers that homeopathy is the product of the epidemic diseases my viewers in aphorism 46 26 aphorism in the footnote what it told the moral and physical phenomena the moral or physical phenomena are not the disease phenomena these are the moral phenomena they that physical phenomena on the sun raises the cage of beholder the moves sar moves there is a physical phenomena moral moral phenomena he told that 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 the moon moon and sadness may be faced by the greater greater cause of moon of sadness 
that is the epitome of this one, this aphorism. But apart from that, these are not the real examples. The real example, as I said in aphorism number 46, he pleased it out. That wherein there are 11 examples here cited. There are 11 examples, all examples are what happened when two similar diseases meet together. These examples are of the epidemic diseases. These may employ examples as the smallpox, smallpox and cowpox inoculations. These examples, nine are smallpox and cowpox inoculations, and two are of the whooping cough, whooping cough and measles inoculation evidences. By this analogy, he establishes that homeopathy is based on the law of similar. He experienced himself, he cured the diseases, and thereafter ultimately concluded similar, similar, similar. But today, his mind premises is that that epidemic diseases is out of the epidemic diseases. So the epidemic today is not fear of us. We can tackle this by, by your applications. Another analogy I would like to get, 103 aphorisms, please go through 101, 100, 100, 101, and 102. I will repeat it, I will discuss it. While in Master Hanuman stated that 101, that, that in like manner, that like manner, he told that very uh, emphatically, emphatically about the, the discovery of the chronic day in same manner as as he had taught what he taught in 100, 101, 102. He, in this lecture, the, relative to the epidemic disease, which are generally of an acute character, the myosematic chronic maladies, which as I have shown always remain the same in their essential nature. With this respect, do, to example, is the better than precept. Always I try to express my views by giving some examples. So with these two examples from 103 and 46, we can establish my uh, premises today that epidemic homeopathy is the product of the epidemic, but it is applicable in all diseases in all circumstances. So in all circumstances, I will give you ideas. My viewers today, because of that, a large number of homeopathic doctors are in, deployed in the rural areas Allopathic doctors are deployed in areas. That is the appeal given by Master Hennyman in the frames of health. If under all circumstances we retain our courage and sympathize compassionate feelings and a clear head, we become person of the great importance of the state. Not to be recompensed by the princess, but conscious of your lofty destiny and rising superiors to ourselves. So we dedicate ourselves to the welfare of the very lowest as well as the highest among the people. We became as he to have angels of the God on earth. My viewers, my student, as you know, today were free. All the temples are closed, all the churches are closed, all the mosques are closed. But the doctors, whether homeopathy, whether allopathy, they are deployed, or Ayurveda, ice doctors are deployed in the rural areas. Ice doctors are deployed in one part, and allopathic doctors in other parts. That will discuss in my sub subsequent. Uh, lectures through the slides I'll be presented. Today, we are worshipping as a God. We are giving the salutes of prime ministers also uh, raise the slogans, please salute them, salute them. So today, that no need of recompense by the princess at that time, and even told, but now today it is applicable. This is appeal to all of you. Please, please, the great importance of the state today, whether allopathy, whether homeopathy. Obviously, homeopathy is the pishila. Now, my students, again, I, I apologize to you. Whenever giving the uh, uh, lecture on this aspect of the epidemic diseases, I simply apologize could be fixed the friends up. That should not have ended in the first place. Do not let your ego stop you from doing what is right. My students, with these words, I will take, I apologize for this, giving this or presenting this lecture. Because why I beg my apology to you? Because that, how many of us, how many of us have seen epidemic disease like COVID-19 today? How many? In my life, I have seen one epidemic in, in the first part of the 70s. In the last 70s, I have seen one, one epidemic. In this pandemic disease, have you seen any author, any person of the India seen? Only one college at Nomina Homeopathy Medical College got the permissions of the IC near and therefore they are examining the patients. They can claim that we have seen. They can claim, 
I can say that they have seen. But my viewers, though I am explaining, explaining, I am giving a lecture on the topic, but I did not have any experience to see such epidemic, such pandemic diseases, because the last pandemic happened 100 years back, as you know, the, the Spanish, uh, Spanish flu. And before that, so many epidemic occurred, the cholera, flu, and also the epidemic like that, I never thought, in spite of, I never experienced so that I apologize and I am giving you the big, big talks. I, we are giving in the big, big talks that we can claim, we can claim, we can claim. But what I am giving lecture on the basis of my text, on the basis of my literature, on the basis of a journal, what I saw on this context. But one epidemic I have experienced in my life in the first part of the second year, that was a joy angler. Viral coronavirus, I will explain in my last part of my lecture how it was virulence. That entire pandemic, it was not a pandemic, it was declared as an epidemic because Bangladesh and West Bengal and eastern part of the country and some part of the Nagpur, I, I, also, I also got some information also affected with that part of it. That only one epidemic I have experienced many life. Pandemic, no, only one pandemic in my life. So with these words, I apologize to, I am saying so many things, but I did not have any experience. My viewers, so it is it's a very popular term. That is the prevention is a better than a pound of cure. As you know, is likewise a pizza of well, if he knows the things that derange the health and cure the disease and how to remove them from persons and health in aphorism number four, and even stated. A doctor has a tool. A doctor would be a health observer, health preserver of health. He is a health advisor. He is a community health officer. And other role, he should be the clinicians. So these aphorisms, wherein he told the thing which caused the disease and how to remove them personal field. Now today this epidemic, every epidemic diseases, there are some cause. What are the causes? Then that is the, that, that is their cause according to them. According to them, we also claim that the virus is the cause. Bacteria is the cause. Here is the virus is the cause. How to keep away from the virus? That knowledge you should keep. Because of that, we should keep away from that influences. So how to remove the virus? Because virus is a natural influences. We have no control of it because virus is coming from the nature. And the virus, somehow it was a zoonotic. Now it is with the human. Now human to human transfers. How to keep away from that? That part we will discuss obviously as a preserver of health as a health advisor, as a community health officer. So my viewers, so a doctor has a two roles. He's a hygienist, a community health officer, and therapeutician and clinical medicines, and prevention and social medicine, community medicine hygiene. My viewers, my students, what do you know? What is the clinical approach today in this epidemic, in this pandemic? That will put separate part, and other part is the preventive and social medicine community medical officers. Here homeopathy medicals a large number of doctors, either government in private, in West Bengal, government doctors involved, in some part of government doctors are involved in this well frontline area for the purpose of screening of the cases, for the purpose of giving the information to the healthy persons, how they will behave, how they will keep away from by following the rules and regulation advisory of the government in India. Clinical part is quite different. Only the one clinical, only the one college got the permission, the applications of these medicines by the way of considering the so many patients at the Agra. But I do not have, I do not have, you do not have, I do not know how many have these experiences to treat to the directly affected COVID patients today. And you have experiences of the epidemic diseases. But this part is, is a vital part, also preventive and social medicines community part. It is also a vital part. So my students, that's, it is another terms I used to give lectures on the subletter causa, toluter effectors, causa, sine qua and all. In my parlance, in the homeopathic parlance, we consider the causa sine qua non, that means scissor effectors, scissor causa. The causa sine qua non is the fundamental cause of the disease, the essential cause of the disease, the myosinematic cause of the disease. Myosinematic cause of the disease, of the true natural disease, that cause chronic disease caused by the 
koza sinek yonon. So how you know the koza sinek yonon? How we know every unit in the Like we examine, uh, we investigate our blood pressure, we examine our blood pressure, estimate our blood pressure by the frequent. We have any such weapon? No. Only by symptoms, by the symptomatology, symptomatology, myosometer, do not have any such things. So we highly remove that uh, effect by the, our medicines, by totality of the symptom and considering the condition, which will be removed. And other thing is prior to that, sometimes the uh, uh, therapeutic effect is always subdued, always it is um, under the subletter cause or toileter effectors. That is the hygienic cause. Hygienic is very much important because that which causes which causes the hindrance in the process of the cures by the way of obstacles. That part it is not my discussion. Now this part very much important between physicians. The epidemiology of every disease because the epidemiology of a disease of a new disease should be considered in this way. Whether it is homeopathy, whether it is an allopathy or I with any pathy, there is no difference of it. Every 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 pathy is required to know the epidemiology of disease. Whether Heyman is given in details about the epidemiology of the disease, yes, Master Heyman has given the epidemiology of disease in French of in 1792, prior to the discovery of the homeopathy. Though he translated in 1790, but 1790s is published a book an essay on new principle for ascertaining the purity powers of drugs and few experiments of the previous principles. He wrote in 1796. Prior to that, he wrote a very good book, lesser writing, as you no know, friends of health, my viewers, my students, my clinicians, those who are attending my lecture today. Please, please recapitulate yourself, or at least you should keep the books and read the books today after my lecture and what Heyman told. What we are learning from the World Health Organization today that Hanneman told 100 years back in 1792. Everything he told in the Friends of Health. Friends of Health, we can claim that our master is the father of the epidemiology. Epidemiology Society of London was investigated in 1850. But 1792, Hanneman told everything in different ways. Hanneman told about everything about the physicians. So basic difference of the epidemiology and clinical medicine you should have to consider. What is the object of the, my viewers, what is the object of the epidemiology? The epidemiology object is you know, the, to know the distribution and magnitude of the healthy population and the disease problem of the population. I didn't give ecological factor, very much important for us today. And also on that basis, we have to do the planning, prevention and evaluation of surface and control and treatment of the disease. The epidemiology of the pandemic disease of today is, is not properly defined today in today after three months and four months. It is going on, it is going on on the basis of statistics, on the basis of statistics. So epidemiology of any disease, either allopathy, either homeopathy, either Ayurvedi or any pathy should know the epidemiology of the, any diseases. So the epidemiologic trial is very much important for us. It is a popular trial. All of you know, just I recapitulate you that three factors are necessary for the diseases. Or that is the epidemic diseases, specifically because of the epidemiology of the, all the diseases based on the epidemiology of the epidemic diseases. So the epidemiology of the general conception is the out of the productions of the epidemic diseases. We can claim it as I claim the homeopathy is the product of. So it is neither allopathy or homeopathy, all, there is no difference of it. But Hanneman, everything is stated in very lucid manner, very simple manner in, in you know, what are the triads, environment, agent, and host. Now, my viewers, there are the disease are the two states, the pre-pathogenesis states and the pathogenetic states. When the organism, the virus enter into the organism, enters in the living organism, then the pathogenesis. After entry, there is also there is also time that is called the that is the incubation period or postrumal stage. And so that there are three stage, one two stage, and another stage is the pathogenesis. Pathogenesis can be divided into two. That is the programmal stage. Other is the symptomatic stage. So the pre-pathogenic stage. We are all in pre-pathogenic states. We are, we are in the midst of diseases. Man exposed to the risk of the, always the risk of the 
means that there is environmental causes. There is the own causes. We are all in pre-pathogenesis phase. So we are all in pre-pathogenesis phase. We have, we have to consider such persons because in this epidemics, a large number of population are escaped, keep away from the infections of the by what? By dint of what? That should be searched for. Truth should be searched for. And what is the scope of it? Now the pathogenic state entry of the agent, post reactional disease it cannot be predictable. It cannot be predictable. It is the modern medicine claim. That is the what? That is the community medicine. Recent book claim that that cannot be claimed. But we say it is a dynamic phenomena. It is a dynamic phenomena as per organo medicines. But apart from that, that pathogenesis phase can be divided into the prodromal phase. That prodromal phase, you have to do a lot. You are getting some patients with a positive with a no symptoms, and some patients with a symptom with positive, they are in quarantine, they are in the hospitals. That though we are having a history of touch, they are in the quarantine, there are isolations. And the patients, and so the prodromal phase, that proponent are very much important. And because in this period, that vital pathology is very much important. Our pathology is the vital pathology, very much important for us to consider. So disease, as I thought that I will express my lecture by theory in advance, that because the progression of the disease can be stopped before the productions of the manifestations by the way of symptoms, pathognomic symptoms, even we have such medicines in this way. Now the agents factors are very much important. There are so much agents are here, biological agents, nutrient agents, physical agents, chemical agents, mechanical agents. As you know, please recapitulate it. If please go to the community medicine room, the virus is the agents today. That pathogenity virulence is very much important. The today's virus is so much virulent. So this virus is so much virulent and pathogenity is very much effective one and it is very much propensity to the produce infection irrespective of the susceptibility, irrespective of the constitution, whether it is a Prince Charles, whether it's any prime minister of any country, whether it is any businessman having good stout figures with lots of uh, uh, lots of things necessary for the protecting's life. If the exposure is more, such virulence is everywhere irrespective of. So sometimes the disease may be conditional, sometimes may be unconditional because of the susceptibility, sometimes overrules by the proficiency, any body can be affected, the virulency of the disease. That nutrient agent, physical agent, chemical agent continually, continually, continually uh, giving effect of the living organism in the host continually nutrient agents what agents we are taking physical agents different types of physical agents because of that we can retract from the language of the master Henryman. so long the civilization progresses civilization progresses the increase the disease increase increases increases and increases and requirement of the medicine also increases and demanded demanded just from the first paragraph of the so these nutrient agents, the physical agents, chemical agents, mechanical agents, insufficient factor necessary for the social factors, that nutrient agents from the morning to night, we are taking artificially preparing food. We are taking artificially prepared drink. We are taking the milk at the morning after getting from the bed, getting out from the bed. The milk, it is a naturally prepared milk. It is collected from cow, no. The means is artificially prepared. That milk, milk is artificially prepared. That artificially prepared hey, by the Amul factory. It is it is where it is. Amul factory is away from the Calcutta. Amul factory is away from the it is in Gujarat. It is in some part of the country. But in, in nearby cities they are manufacturing, they are manufacturing may mixing some some chemicals. So nutrient agents. It is artificially prepared. What do you think? Our constitution, they are affecting our constitution. From the morning, that bread, that bread, how it is prepared? The bread is artificially prepared. It is natural? No. The foods are genetically engineering foods. My students, my viewers, genetically engineering foods. Do not know the remote effect of it. In order to uh, uh, fulfill the thirst of the 
desire of the population because of the huge populations of the country. Every country is every country is even Chinese building. They are also preventing it. In our country, they are permitted. So artificially put their force. Tomatoes, all the things, rice, weeds, or artificial. You do not know the remote effect of it. Do not consider the remote effect of it because they also some some influences our economy, some influence our constitution to modify it. Physical agents, there are so many physical agents that come in the form of light, in the form of sounds, in the form of odors, in the form of vapors, we are continually, continually, continually facing. Very few would expect a disasters happen in the hijack. What thought a large number of population damaged of that, that, that physical agents and that gases. So continually getting their effect on the, the constitution, continually fighting against it. Our vital force continually fighting against it, try to try to establish the equilibrium without any medicine, without anything. The these medicines naturally try to get rid of, try to get rid of, try to. But how long? How long? A time will come when other influences come. Obviously, it will produce the agents. Now, chemical agents, similarly chemical agents, starting from the pesticides, starting from the so many agents like we are also using daily life in it today because of that. But we are suppressing our general expressions, general uh, uh, perspiration, everything. The normal physiological phenomena where your brain, others, everything are also producing effect on the economy. Obviously, some remote effect. Instantaneously, we are getting rape, but obviously, ultimately, some we were cream, he was using some creams. We are using even in order to sometimes our new generations, young generations, female generations are using hormonal tablets, insulation for the insulation, and in order to get rid of such type of problem such that that can avoid the menstruation in a ritual or other things or any that may be a problem they are using some men, hormonal tablets obviously their chemical agents obviously producing a much effect we should think of mechanical agents also some sorts of mechanical agents always always we are getting influence of that agents on the host absorb insufficient factor necessary for them. please remember in Aphorism 77, absence or interruption uh, that that we require for the necessary for the support of the uh, uh, and and that we are avoid from 77 chronic chronic diseases. These factors, these factors will not produce the artificial, will not produce the natural chronic disease. These factors are continually producing on my economy, on your economy, on our economy of the society, inappropriately known chronic visit, even the social factors also there. The political issues, the moral issues, different social factors are also continually affecting on body and uh, our agents indirectly producing different sorts of disease and other agents direct like biological agents are directly producing and that indirect agents, bad agents, Sometimes they're helping us for the help for the instantaneous ready, instantaneous satisfaction, but ultimate effect we do not know. But in my language, in our language of organic edition, that agent are producing the inappropriate name chronic disease. 70, 77 aphorism. Please demand it. Now the host it is the soil of the seed. Always it has been tortured. It has been tortured. The man is viewed as an agent of his own diseases. His state of health. It determined more by what it does himself than what some outside germ effects. Because already the seed has been prepared, the soil has been prepared. The good, the good soil is prepared by the agent. Virus, bacteria, commonly the virus, the new viruses are coming. New viruses are coming because the soil is already prepared by the things as I have already told. Just told that things already soil is prepared. That soil because the host factors, there are so many factors are responsible. Hereditary factors, age factors, sex factors, and other influences, as I told, that also host factors is very much important for the disease. Now the environment, physical, biological, psychological. The environment, the physical environment, you know, the pollution, the pollution, 
is a very important very important thing today for suffering from the so many diseases because of the pollution by the way of air pollution in the way of water pollution in the way of pollution of the noise but the physical influences are continually affecting on the body from continuous effect in the body they are also factors which modify our susceptibility which modifying our constitution by the by the way of different types of inflation biological influences are also as you already discussed related to it because psychological also man today is viewed as an agent of his own diseases so my students next the clinical medicine already just have told the diagnosis of the proper treatment and that is the therapeutics identity of source of infection mode of spread and geological factors and determine future trend and recommended content this is clinical medicine is it defined from our therapeutic knowledge therapeutics no no difference we do it in my clinical practice in our competition as a therapeutician also do it there is no difference of the clinical medicine as we all gain knowledge from the community medicine and statistician role in any diseases is very much important statistician's role in epidemiology is very much important today we are feeling a lot of troubles with the proper statistics is not coming out from the china proper statistics is not coming out from the different other countries and therefore our therefore our society therefore our society medical um, authority like world health organization not in a proper way to uh, to determine the static they are suffering from the statistical illusions in this court what is the statistics just few days back that nomina uh, homeopathy medical college claim that they have uh, seen 45 cases out out of 40 all of the cases are remo uh, from the diseases by the way of application of homeopathy medicine now they are showing the relation so ultimately statistics will come that statistics will be the truth whether how many cases and how many cases has been cured how many cases has been prevented so we should have to keep the statistics in proper way this is a very much important so either homeopathy will follow up it obviously because of the recently the parliament supreme court of india some of our friends my fellows and uh, he lodged a petition very petition over there and that why the homeopathic doctors will not permit to treat the covid 19 case supreme court prime facie rejected the case because what account because we do not have such statistics we have a good history we had a good history in the background to prevent the diseases but we do not have the statistics in a parameter of modern sciences we have to prepare the statistics in this way because in the evidence based science we have to prepare the evidence based we are very very much theoretician in our practice and giving the lecture in our college referring so many books and others but we are curing the diseases it is a fact because of that certain percent of the population are being affected now one person now the status now the report is 1 lakh 1 lakh something 1 lakh 10000 a people affected in india out of 20 out of 120 crores of populations so what is the percentage percent of illness the remaining are the remaining are rescued escape from by the way of keeping away from the diseases by following the advice of the government of india because by home quarantine and following the social distancing and total which also a large part are taking homeopathy medicines by their constitutional people the prolonging the pin a few days back one popular news people claim the 50% of the population of india going toward the homeopathy really that is happening today what i saw in my past life of bhms course back it was increased a large number of population now the acceptance of the homeopathy is more 54% at that time was so no much but but now it is accepted now it is accepted so but we have to keep the records so one person to the population not being affected today large number affected and large number are being treated by the homeopathic medicines and a large number of population are being distributed by homeopathic medicine in the form immunity reserve in the form of epidemic whatever matter i will come later on about that part that statistics should be proved and i approached all the clinicians those who are viewing this program please keep the records keep record the records and details of the patient details on the healthy person those to whom you are distributing the 
distributing their medicines in the name of arsenic, whatever might be it, you please uh, keep the records. Otherwise, you'll not claim it. Because this is the, now the question is that Supreme Court rejected the case because of do not have we do not have that statistician for the statistics report, but they are the cause of the statistics. Because there are some illusion of the statistics. Please keep in mind that illusion as observed by the Barnard saw so in 1905 in the first part of the earlier century. Even today, there the jugglery of the statistics also happen sometimes. Therefore, they claims they means you can understand who I'm telling who. And sometimes we fail because of that we have to keep because there is question of rationality just in this context. I tell you, statistical relation, please go through these books. This if a disease is one which normally attacks 15 percent of the population, and if the effect of profile is actually to increase the proportion to 20 percent, the publication of this figure of the 20 percent will convince the public that the profile has reduced the percentage of 80 percent instead of increasing it by five. Because the public left it itself and to the old gentlemen who are always ready to remember for every possible subject that the thing used to be much worse than the they are now. Such old gentlemen greatly outnumber the uh, laureators tempora acta. Laureators tempora acta go through this French. will assume that the former percentage is about 100. This is the things happens in the statistics. There is a string statistics can man manipulated statistics sometimes. So we should be rational. I do not know how many we are following the statistics. Follow. This is very important thing to keep in the epidemiology, object of the epidemiology, any diseases, especially the epidemic diseases. The methods of public health, as you know, just recapitulated because from the knowledge of the community medicine, you know that the methods of economy are three, social medicine, preventive medicine, and method public health community medicines, public health based on etiology and the preventive medicine based on the communicable disease. The communicable disease at present now, the modern accept, whether we will accept or not, that is not the question by the immunizations. National immunization schedule, whether you will follow it or not follow it, that is the question. There is a debate, big debate always going on and in past that big debate lodged by CCH and so many authorities whether you follow, I do not know what was the regulation of that. But that is the rule of the land. That is the rule of the land. Otherwise, we have to prove it or we have to follow. Because our generations, after our generation, all the child, today's child are immunized by the different types of epidemic disease, different types of uh, uh, vaccines by different types of vaccines. Therefore, we do not see the so many epidemic diseases in my child, a childhood, I observed that measles, whooping cough, and so many diseases, they are not happening. That thing we should have considered. Simultaneously, because of that community medicine gives us knowledge of that, and Hanneman, also afterwards, Hanneman, so many solvers, the bad effects of vaccination, that should be considered. They claim, they emphatically said, yes, it has bad effects. It has bad effects. Everywhere, they also say, in their own medicine, this is the bad effects. This is the bad effect, this is the bad effect. Be care of it. But the large nature, they claim the population, the jugglery of the statistics. By doing that, that we are claiming, we are claiming that we are preemptions. That just, just I have told earlier back on the statistics and what. Now, my viewers, we are saying the only the iceberg of the diseases. Symptomatic diseases, what physicians say. But above the sea, we are seeing this one, ice bark of the diseases. Underlying cause of the epidemic diseases, any disease you do not see. This is the pre-symptomatic disease physician does not see. Only we have a lot of scope to reveal such things that we need come, we come into the symptomatic. That iceberg phenomena very much applicable as well as in community medicine, as well as in homeopathy. Because the latent sora, as you know, because you know that's constitutional treatment by which you can we can correct that constitution that the iceberg will never come up and the iceberg of which will vanish out by the way of constitutional treatment. We have a lot of underlying C. Only we the homeopath consider the past history. We consider the constitutional treatment by the way of myosemitic treatment. So there is also applicable the icebergs phenomena in homeopathy too, because by the way of 
mode of treatment application of myosinophilic treatment. Now, this quote, I, I quote from some stalwarts in India, the visible part is so small, but the invisible part is so limitless. Visible part, what I see, the iceberg is very small, but other part is limitless. We are completely bewildered in that vast infinity. How much can you see? Practically nothing. We are moving in circles in the midst of infinite explosions and trying to transgress stone with a broken compass. What is your resource, my dear traveler, of endless journey of, of your life? Nothing. There is only blind faith. The blind faith by which the coral making the vast islands at the core of the sea with its bones. The kingdom of knowledge is growing by inches. We have started with darkness and also also with darkness. One or two rays of light are being visible in between. The dense fog will disappear. The perseverance of mankind and the universe will become radiant one day. My viewers, the dense fog will disappear. The perseverance of mankind and the universe will become radiant one today. This is the saying of J.C. Bose. Jagadish Chandra Bose, renowned scientist, as you know, he was a supporter of homeopathy. His relative, one of his father in law, cousin, father in law, I like that, as you know, that Mahindra Sarkar, due to his influence, went to London for studying science. He established a radio and he told, he, he establishes the plant his life. He, he said that he animated in him, in him at, even the inanimate has life, he forecasted it. Plant has life, so forecasted it. It is his saying that a one day, yes, the one day because of that, at one day, nothing that, because we consider that the deeper part, the larger part of the life, because this is in dark, we consider that part, for treating the one sided disease, for treating in so many diseases, though it is not one sided, seems to have some symptoms that seem to, seems to be admins. It has symptomy one sided disease. Because of that, it needs, it requires the discernment of the physician, foresighted and the physician, how to bring forth the symptoms. That is the correct way must have been in organ medicine. So with this is very much relevant. That epidemic disease, that epidemic disease you are telling, you are telling by the virus and virus. Why this virus? If it is not that Frankenstein, if it is natural, so there are a lot of things to say by the way of saying of this as a only we consider the constitutionality plan by which you can reveal that that the radiant days by the by the our perseverance of the mankind now the time today is in the epidemic as homeopathy is the product of the epidemic today is the epidemic disease and the population I mean large proportion think of the homeopathy today now the guideline from the risk factors at the biological situation, age group, sex group, physiological state, genetic factors, physical situation, rural, socio-cultural, cultural situations. These are very much important, though I have given some light in my through my earlier sites in details here. The age group, infants, so what these are the biological situation, the guideline for the risk factors, what physical situation, urban, slums, living condition overcrowding, environment, water supply, these are very much important for us. The slum area, slum area in Mumbai, if you find, the large number of population in the slum area are affected. The statistics is not in coming down, statistics in the coming This is very much important. In a room, 10 people, 10 people stays there. How they will maintain, how they will maintain their quarantine? It is quite impossible, it's quite impossible for that. Socio culture and cultural situation, social class, yes, ethnic to cultural group, family disruption, education, housing, customs, events, everything coming into factor for the epidemiological factor of this epidemic disease. Because it needs proper interpretation and to the discussion. I am not going to the details. Each individual part, like organ of medicine, needs interpretations. My students are prominent risk factors today. What do you find? The smoking causes heart disease, the risk factor. Those who are smokers, heart diseases. Blood pressure, heart diseases. Lack of exercise, suffer from sedentary lives. What heart diseases? These are prominent factors. So heart diseases, they are very much predisposed to this epidemics. Because of that, 
that the comorbidity sometimes it happens sometimes because of the world health organization and you also claim these these patients should keep away from the viruses by the way of following the quarantine and social quarantine home content smoke as you know there is a risk factor smoking alcohol ironizing radiation environmental pollution meditation infectious agents that risk factors and cancer the environment emotion also the stroke high blood pressure motor vehicle accidents who are prone to motor vehicle accidents only the alcoholic commonly alcoholic those who do not use the seat belts do not to control their speech motorcycle those used to wheelers and the sometimes there is a, there is a accident prone areas some part of this there are uh, accident prone area in all cities nagpur there is always happens over there because the road map is like that road is people like that always the vehicles are turned down and so these factors such similar things some diseases also risk factors of the epidemic diseases and some risk factors also prone to some diseases cirrhosis of liver commonly and alcohol will be prone to it similarly in epidemic diseases some diseases obviously these also factors are very much important for us what we call these factors of the getting the infectious diseases now the host defenses is my question of discussions immunity is the questions of discussions now let us see the what modern medicine is thought in respect to the immunity and what is the generalized thought on the modern medicine because all the medicines should consider this one and thereafter they should they should consider of their self according to their own principle as homeopathy could believe some principle we have some principle and because and therefore always claim the only the path is established on the basic law other path do not have any law claim like that obvious that is proved and reproved and verified and now the immunity as you know the active immunity and passive immunity the active immunity by humoral cellular and both the combinations by no until and unless the infective agents and passive immunity normal ig when the serum is in serum is introduced specific human ig whether we follow or not that is the question but we have to follow prime phs in order to acquire the knowledge so therefore i require facility active immunity is by humoral cellular by combinations by active immunity by by way of vaccinations humoral immunity by injecting some serous animal activity normal ig specific human ig um, immunoglobulins even in injected by passive immunities so by this way we at least we study the community medicines book but in addition to that every teacher of community medicine should say what organon says so organon has some other aspect it is prior to that because sometimes we also always consider the vaccinations bad effects of vaccination called as vaccinosis the immunizing agents are vaccino immunizing biological substances are available today major percentage of the population are taking it because of the national immunization and schedules is mandatory to follow to us or that we follow not that is quite but in, but in open we cannot uh, cannot disturb this rule because i have some experience in west bengal some part in murshidabad specifically some homeopathic doctors claim and that no they will not allow to distribute pulse polio vaccine in the in his area and he communicated to the uh, panchayat sarpanch and sarpanch also agreed with him and allowed but ultimately police posting was there with the bad because the block medical officers informed the higher authorities and ultimately this person was arrested because of the land of the land, law of the land you have to follow you take the populations the statistics we should have to take how many populations of the young generation what is the number except number statistics that have been immunized since after the introduction of the national immunization schedule and how many of them are suffering from diseases since after the immunization there is a vital point for being a homeopath how many of them and how many of them are getting effect of the viral diseases this is very important criteria we have to make the statistics in the population i appeal to all my viewers those are practicing in with particular obviously they are covering some populations you please please consider that populations that young population how many have been 
immunized and how many of them are getting effect of some viral diseases new viral diseases for the immunized obviously they will not get infected in spite of that even after immunizations some sorts of disease appears measles is coming in other forms hoping covid did not stay till today but measles i saw in my practice even after immunization immunization they are getting infected i asked one of my non and allopathic friends that i am giving my bcg to my grandson whether he will affect getting affected in further in future he told with laugh with smile doctor never thought of that even after bcg if he getting exposed if he getting exposed by stimulation in a tuber crosses area he will get affect so what is that so even a person is getting affected up at the virus manufacturing even if that can be affect so it is conditions i will later on discuss that vaccine immunobiological substances whether really they are immunizing us or it is producing artificial disease producing artificial not artificial chronic disease i am telling you obviously you may come claim the artificial chronic disease yes it is artificial but whenever it is remaining your economy artificial why they are they are torturing your constitution why they are even modify your susceptibilities and how many they are getting effect of this new newly born epidemic disease has broken out today that should be considered in our view because homeopathy needs that surveillance homeopathy needs that for the cure for the treatment of that particular thing by the way vaccinations or by the way anything so like that there are so vaccine immunological substances are we are waiting to the entire world waiting for that vaccine 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 america involved our institution in india they are doing research they are doing research on that way that how the immunization how the immunization before the herd immunity appears because the herd immunity as you know it will take time when the large number of population get affected that the herd immunity and then the herd immunity will coming out but the vaccine at present but before the vaccine i have told you all we have lot of to do in the language of the jc boss by the way of constitutional treatment of we are here discuss later on here from here so these are the vaccines as you know so many bcg so many vaccines so many vaccines are available today so many vaccines are available to immunoglobulin vaccines not immunoglobulin the vaccine kill vaccine live vaccine oral polio measles all the vaccines are there rabies all the vaccines are there all are getting effect obviously that is also my point of discussion whether animal supported vaccine or not that i will discuss this vaccine is available but animal and them only vaccine was there that he that person who discovered there is a professor jenner 1796 he discovered that cow pox it was not incidental it was an accidental discovery because he saw there is a story there is a fable behind it as you know how he invented the cow pox that fable that you know that cow pox he that suddenly he saw some uh, milk maid the female milk maid supplies that and what the history and not going to that the 1796 hanuman and also he supported it i will come in later and why he told that the universal vaccination stopped that the disease ranging around when one city in may attacked the two third of the child or one third of the child died of it but the new present generation do not know that the small pox that ranging around the last was last small pox found in the 17 probably in 1977 Seventy-seven and so on. One or two cases. And um, after that, there is no smallpox. But these vaccines that is available to the population. How many of us? How many of our next generation population, our young generations, are being getting immunized, immunized, and their bad effects should be considered? How they are modified by the way of some sorts of artificial disease? Whether antibody or antigen, that antibody is formed. No doubt, the antigen gone. The antibody is remaining in the constitution. Obviously, it has roles in other ways. Anything foreign substances cannot remain in the body because of the body will try to accommodate it by the immunizing. But sometimes it has some bad effects, bad effects, bad effects. 
That is also point of discussion. Now the basis of immunology, what they claim and what Jenner claim that nothing but the law of minimum our ourselves. Theory of minimum infection causes immunity maximum infections. More piteous law, you say no. That immunize sick action, leave action, the theory of minimum infection and Hennepin supported nothing but the law of similar. Aphorism 46, you may quote it, that aphorism 46, that is nothing but the law of similia and also the law of minimum. So the basis of the immunology, in one way they are also supporting the law of similia, in other way supporting of the law of minimum. Obviously, for one diseases, they are giving the one vaccines, also they are supporting the mono, that means simplex, also they are supporting by the way of immunology. Now, infectious epidemiology, just I have taught you, this is very much important, as you know, that is very much important for the source of reservoir should be known. Mode of transmission, susceptible host, the source of reservoir, here the source of you is the community. The mode of transmission, whether it is a fumite, whether it is aerosol, whether it be contact, bad touch, but the susceptible host, it has been modified by several factors I have told you, that should be kept away. That should be considered and we have to follow the advice of the homeopathy to keep away from the influences and the prevention and control reservoir and only the way now we are following it every epidemic diseases is applicable in every disease breaking of the chain breaking of the chain from the susceptible host because the susceptible host do not know i in this virus we are all susceptible it is sufficiently disposed for the reservoir they are affected persons they are, they are seems to be affected and also those who are getting in touch with the other persons because the chain is the motto we are following it. Now the causes of disease in homeopathy, because the causes of disease of homeopathy you know the acute disease and chronic disease. Chronic disease of three types, causes are acute disease are manifest exciting cause and exciting cause proper that is recapitulation for you and, and other chronic diseases are artificial chronic diseases by allopathic drugs, prolonged your use of allopathic drugs in large doses in heroic doses, and they produce artificial chronic diseases. My viewers, in this respect, because of that, now today the modern medicine, after the introductions of the uh, penicillin, in after 1928, so we do not see, but we did not saw thing, such thing they use calomel. Prusicaric, prusicaric, morphotis, cetones, purgatives, or trifenic, already they stopped. But bleaching, some part of the country, especially the Indian medicine, they are following the leaching. So these are the mode of treatment by which continually using Hanuman Express, these are they produce artificial chronic diseases. But today, there is a big but. But today, they minimize the doses. But today, they are using such things because because of the modern medicines because what is the world in the organization what they are telling stop misuse of the antibiotics misuse of the antibiotics why why they are telling it is just discovered just last century 1920 or like that and even today they are claiming please don't use please don't use indiscriminate use of the steroid group of drugs, indiscriminate use of the painkillers, the large part of the populations are suffering. Animal during case checking, even of selection of the remedy, he reminded us, please you take the history of the medicine as taken, even the allopathy medicine, you have to take the history and to know the bad effects of the that. Because please remind, please go through the organic medicine. What medicine, whether allopathy, or then homeopathy. Homeopathy, obviously that was not the proper homeopathy. Homeopathy, but in the name of homeopathy use in the polypharmacy combination drugs and combination therapies in others. These are one way allopathy. So the artificial chronic disease has produced today by these use of the some sorts of antibiotics and some sorts of indiscriminate use of every the steroid group of drugs and painkillers and depressive drugs, neurodepressive, so many depressive drugs, continually getting effect, continually getting effect, and the constitution being tempered, continuing torture, and economy wanted to get rid of it, 
and ultimately disfigured and therefore it is also true we think of because of this in a pre-planning studies are given so many factors are today because so the lifestyle disorders in approved name today is also torturing the constitution and modifying because of because of that act. From morning to day, we are online order, online order, online order. We are not getting the part up. But one thing I I thank I, I, I obviously I I should give to the thank to the coronavirus. They have changed your lifestyle disorder, lifestyle. Now we have changed the lifestyle. That is all the blessings of the corona. I do not know the curse of the corona. But only the blessings of the corona, total entire population of the world. world, they have changed their lifestyle, lifestyle. But due to the online classes, as sometimes online pressure work of home, also some sorts of problems are there. Obviously, they think of that because of the modern days, the curse of the modern days, in appropriate name colleges. So these picture we are getting in these picture. Therefore, the natural disease you are not getting. They preparing a layer. Of as produced by this and also produced by that, and then in, in, uh, we have to remove it. Otherwise, you will not get the picture. The constitution is jumbled up because of that factors. Because we cannot remove it, we do not keep away uh, inappropriately named chronic diseases and noxious influences. And uh, easily you can avoid even noxious influence. You cannot avoid it because they become part and parcels of the life, and therefore we cannot pass of life without them. And therefore, we are giving the orders of the so many uh, foods like the junk foods and others. But we are enjoying because most of the shops are in close. The government is trying to open it. Uh, but but think of that matters as uh, being a homeopathy soothe. Now, classification of disease after orders, if you just remember that chronic acute disease and chronic disease, for example, 73 as he classified the acute disease in two because acute disease. Number one is the individual acute disease, other is the acute disease, collective acute disease. Though some textbooks, not textbooks, some marketly available notebooks, they claim the three types. No, I say because I do not say I am not authority, organ on say, because organ on, if you follow the aphorism 73, that epidemic, that individual type, there is a sentence or sporadic. And in continuation of sporadic, there is another sentence. And like this, that means like sporadic, that means and that means, this is the clinical basis of application. Hanneman classified the disease under the clinical approach. This is not the systematic approach as the modern medicine classified disease. Or is the, our classification is the rational approach. What Hanneman saw, organism is a theoretical book, it is not a theoretical book. It is a practical book because of that Hanneman, what he saw is practical experience and he stated it in a rule of course, in a aphorism, aphoristic styles, every words of the aphorism needs interpretation and clarifications. And therefore, he classified collective diseases. Collective diseases again sporadic and epidemic. Because if you 100, 101, 102, you will, you will proceed the approach of case taking, where he is stated that that collective so far from the case taking of the collective diseases, both the sporadic and epidemic. So classification of disease and the chronic disease, just I have told you three, three types, chronic disease and homeopathic rupture prevention and con, uh, control of epidemic disease. Very quickly I go through this one because my, till now the my main topic is not come. And then the first to postulate the theory of susceptibility to infection because, because in 1792, 1792 he postulated it. Before none, because of that, the modern medicine come here. No, so no modern medicine. No, the world health organization come here after the apex body. World health established just uh, in the far, middle part of the last century, uh, probably in 1948. Where prior to that, the guidelines and the health advice, everything is given the friends of health. Uh, Hanneman was a hygienist and dietist. Hanneman is the father of the modern medical hygiene, as you know. Friends, you please go through the recapitulate everything. Today, the police compulsion, everything is written. And what government following, what one did is saying, everything is written. And, and because the friends of health, and he, the bite of the mad dogs, it's a very nice book. Wherein he wrote several things. He has written, he has mentioned about the how the epidemic is. This, this in Today, in World Health Organization, are also following, is following this one. 
friends of health i can claim we can claim mother other of the epidemiology father of the uh, epidemic disease epidemiology is the master element on outbreak of epidemic he said if necessary police compulsion police compulsion yes our government thinking that sometimes we are providing police that if we police to isolate the patient because because from the healthy without compulsion without compulsion without consciousness and if necessary with police compulsion so friend of friends of his stated nice in this world say friends of health for every kind of positive exhalation there is an all probability antidote only you done not always an up about the letter because because you do not know because every there is some spy antidote of this today that that virus ragging around because it is plans regarding malignant fever he has given my nice direction if you follow seven direction he has given over there seven directions you please read out my students this is in a totally academic opinion being an academician i am trying to give you informations from a literature and text and therefore you should consult your books friends of health again for what he told earlier before 1000 year back establishment of the world in the condition suggestion for prevention of epidemics has given very nice how the towns will be uh, general special direction he has given to the government even he wrote letter letter to the minister home minister ladies seek room visitors you want it how will be a nice description over there to the air for 100 years after 100 years or to precautionary direction to the physician how the physician will get what will be because the physician are getting exposed the nursing person are getting exposed directly there are precautionary direction very fine direction what we saw today has given by the advisory to the government same thing are given over there and perhaps always in for say given in phases of the prophylaxis given in phases of the prophylaxis because the prevention and cure of the scarlet fever the following the prophylaxis measures we told about them and the scarlet in a fever he introduced the belladonna for the this is also accidental not incidental as you know the checkered history of it how he invented the belladonna uh, as he has how he invented the jenner the cowpox similar many incidents as you saw please go to the richard hill if you go to the um, uh, friends of health now come to the chapter my students artificial morbidity agent uh, as you know aphorism number 31 that is the partly physical and partly partly physical and partly psychical partly physical and part, partly psychical that that inimical forces partly physical and partly psychical i have told you that as an academician i have read out my academy as the aphorism 31 to which are terrestrial existence is exposed which are term morbidity no such do not possess the power of morbidity during the health of men unconditionally but we are made ill by them only by our organism is sufficiently disposed and susceptible to the attack susceptibility now the question of susceptibility or on the medicine animal which not express is viewed in respect of the susceptibility but there are so many authors as express his views of the susceptibility or on only if you find in trial aphorism organon only two aphorisms only 72 73 why the susceptibility in the few person identified the sporadic disease and in this aphorism 70 31 and also in the 281 when the potentized medicines are given the susceptibility and irritability he described over there these very aphorisms but it is our duty to to express so what is the role of the susceptibility the susceptibility is the way what is the susceptibility it is the it is a response to any stimulus or is empathetic physician on concerned with the morbid susceptibility the susceptibility on is the normal that is the healthy persons on a healthy person if it is increased there is a morbid susceptibility that morbid susceptibility is getting toward the disease and the susceptibility can be reduced but the susceptibility reduced 
to that extent sometimes what is to destroy that means death that destroy that means death so susceptibility is one of the factor we can modify the susceptibility by our medicines by our diet and regimen and by the some advisor is to give in to the patients one man's meat is another meat is a very good proposition as you know the robot the copy one man's meat another man that i can interpret it but i don't know the time will permit by the immunity which is obtained at the cost of the integrity and purity that is the saying of the stuart law that delay purchase inoculation of crude pathological products like animal cell and vaccine for first on this poor years humanity to impairment of destruction of the normal susceptibility it results in the contamination or poisoning of the entire organ what i told you poisoning of the entire organism morbid condition artificial comorbid artificial disease this is a saying of the stuart toes and therefore we have to follow the stalwarts in order to get rid of this this the perils of inoculation the perils of inoculation is not my saying you please go through the uh, nice saying by saw each corner saw he has nicely explained the what are the perils of inoculation and now 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 my students the majority cause of infective or collective diseases exciting cause is this and there is the need to myasin and fundamental cause always in case of acute disease always sora is there even that pandemic sora is behind there it is a single episode it is a single episode and therefore the single episode caused by the acute acute myasin and that that we have to consider the acute myasin is there and my students the homeopathic prevention of all diseases is a general concept you please please consider please consider the general conception of the disease the homeopathic prevention of all diseases we can prevent the disease antenatal by antenatal prevent the disease after birth by protecting posterity in advance and 100 284 foot north six edition foot north we follow the 284 six edition foot north or in he wrote that if a mother is given the thora that sulfur potent ice even the white mother is given and the, the baby will be sound healthy baby the new generation do not know that part it is so the antenatal care 200 for pure by antiphoric myasin treatment postnatal after birth by white mother by individualistic approach and constitutional myasinic myasinic treatment will protect some sort of stress by drug curing 284 Please read out two for one forty one. The boys in foot note. Or he said after drug coming, the patient with the tumors become more unalterable. He become more robust as all experiences go. So another way of prevent preventions. We should recapitulate. We should keep in mind that element for our for these vaccine for the legal side has given this antenatal care. Element appeal had a appeal to his authority, but none of us. None of us starts on that point. Postnatal only are on postnatal, but the trap proving. How many of us prove the trap? But the trap proving is mandatory in syllabus. Trap proving is mandatory in internship course. How many years? So how will how will experiences and how will become the robust? These two things are omitted. But only your care of that postnatal and the constitutional myasthenic children and individual children. Anyway, protocol of for epidemic disease, as you know. The complete survey of all these picture by profile axis, as you know, we call it the by hundred hundred uh, complete picture without surveying the case, without seeing the case, hundred, hundred one, hundred two profile axis, and that becomes the purity. That becomes the purity. The another way, and another way in aphorism fifty six, and even said the cure in advance. The no source isopathic mode of treatment. When they claim that they are curing disease, and he even condemn it. No, when you are using the medicine in potentized form, it is nothing but the homeopathy. Similarly, Imam is opposed by saying Imam, and therefore, by the Nusrat is very good, very good approach for us by which you can apply the prevention of the diseases. We have I showed and also showed when there is a question of the profile issues, when the question of the immunity, when the question there is a question of the immunity. Oh, we are still directly interview raising the immunity, and again, I part homeopathy cure in Azadah and prevention and profile issues. He has mentioned in so many part in appendix chapters the prevention and prophylaxis and anti-sesam distance for aphorisms. 
in 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 appendix chapter that is not discussion and therefore we should know this one proper way yeah agle sir very uh, very nice session by you and uh, i believe now we are at come out at the end of this particular session now we have one more speaker so before uh, handing mic to the speaker just want to know akhil sir how much is left so that uh, we can I work out only, how to only, only, only five or six slides okay okay please please end it up and then we uh, we have one more speaker dear audience uh, dr anita so please okay okay, uh, okay, okay. just uh, just i want to it's okay it's okay sir please continue and please uh, uh uh finish uh, your part sir please oh, again i have to skin sir yeah it's okay sir please skin i have to skin scan karne padega no no it is already done just minimize your web browser and please uh continue your speaking sir how will minimize the web browser just minimize your browser web browser okay okay now it is come yes yes we are able to see your ppt sir okay okay now my post viewers i have told you earlier the master was a supported genre or not yes master did support it because it therefore is in 46 he clearly stated uh, that uh, after universal inoculation of the cowpox vaccine and the new generation do not know um, do not know the disease lagging around please read out now the scope scope of immunology in homeopathy that is a topic of discussions obviously proper by which but without that slides what i told you we cannot prevent the diseases this is the basic things and yes can produce immune bodies or not we can claim yes we can produce the immune bodies or not yes obviously it produce immune bodies without which we can prevent this a time will come when obviously which will produce the immunology the first question obvious produce by which by individualistic approach by treating the disease by the susceptibility meeting up the susceptibility my meeting up the susceptibility by giving the medication considering the medications we can yes we have the scopes obviously why we protect the disease obviously there is a immune bodies are raised in a long run it will take time how long we cannot say primary can stop by applying the similimum by the way of similimum is possible to how to prove that man is susceptible how how to prove, prove that man is susceptible if you give a medicine similar medicines similar similar medicines to the patient similar patient to persons can prove this by by susceptible by giving a few doses by quick succession epidemic disease if the person reacts soon after second or third dose if say it may presume that hyper susceptibility to the medication and constantly to that type of disease having similar manifestation but they do not react do not react after 18 10 days 18 days well so that means yes yes presume that person is more or less immune so by giving the preventive medicines because now the questions may come the arsenic as yes arsenic has some history to give some immunities arsenic three doses four doses are given if some a way if they produce producing symptoms that should be observed we are discriminately indiscriminately using in the arsenic 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 but i am telling that you please state the statistics and tell them to wait again to you whether they are producing any symptom or not and therefore you can assess the susceptibilities because of that when the immunity is raising or not and therefore in the such way we can we can prove that the susceptibility individual how long time we got that we we cannot express in potent time medicine what they, because it differs from man to man but it will take time in the long run in a short short in, in that will protect for the immunity and protect of the immunity obviously that will take it depending on the case to case because the susceptibility differs Now, what potency is required for the immunity? What potency? Because the medium potency, the thirty potency was better. Low and high potency should not be given. The thirty potency better. They have put the Central Council of Immunity has chosen, and thirty. It is rightly they have chosen. Whether they are raising the immunity is other questions. But for media pop the questions, they have launched the research papers. And how many of us are following this protocol? And that I do not know. that right to follows 
considering the medicine, but they continue considering, considering the immunity by giving the histories and others, but they did not see the patient. But because the arsenic has some immunity powers and raise the immunity so many epidemic diseases, considering that point of view. But we have to, we, we are distributing the medicine, but we are not following them. The potency 30 and is very, very rational one and 30 potency should be given. What is the best medicine for immunization in this context? I will support Master Hanneman that the nosot is the best medicine. I show and auto showed are the best medicine for immunization. And approach of case checking immunization is epidemic is very much important should not be prejudiced the prejudice because it is a very important factor if you become a prejudice to take the case will fail in the request every consequence is new a new episode this ep episode is new for us this epidemic is new for us so we have to take the case because the novena hospital they had took and they thought that bryonia is the patient they thought the bryonia is the uh, medicine. So, Brainia will be the, I do not know they declare that it is the uh, genus for them or not, but it will be the genus obviously because the majority of symptom of the Brainia. And it will be curative too for the affected person and the preventive for the genus by the way of poor. And Calcutta, what we saw, I just consulted, they are also get, getting Brainia and some are still, uh, and camphor, some part are telling the camphor in this epidemics. Camphor, I do support of the camphor because if you go through the um, appendix chapter, when Henneman told that uh, the camphor are used by the old school of medicines by camphor, low potency, they camphor, crude camphor they gave for the influenza. I do not know they have got from the camphor on that context or by seeing the patient not there. Also, obviously, camphor used by the old school of medicines and that was forbidden by the old school. They did not know the minimum dose. And Henneman thereafter, he used camphor in low potencies for preventing diseases and sometimes uh, there are so many examples in appendix and introduction chapter homeopathy by non-homeopathic persons and so should not be prejudiced animals direction in aphorism 100 case checking aphorism 101 how the portrait of the disease is formed aphorism 102 examination of the episode and writing of the symptom if please contemplate it and of every where he has given a approach and 100 to has given the uncommon peculiar characteristic symptoms should be considered by individualistic features and therefore we have to consider the genus epidemicus. It needs, next the selection of the remedy is very much important, we become confused. No selection of the remedy is very important or in Hediman is given 150, 153, 154, 154, the uncommon peculiar characteristic symptom in 213, in 213 in this context, I am somebody telling it is CPA Somebody telling and that other may aconite may come. Yes, they may be right because of that. So we need hospital therefore never be able to comfortable nature. That is to say homeopathically, if you do not every case of disease, even such in acute, observe along with the other symptoms, those relating to the even in acute, the relating to the changes of the mind and disposition, even in acute diseases, even in acute disease as in acute disease. We have to mind and change, mind and mind and change your mind and disposition. In footnote 213, it is under the mental disease, but yes, the epidemic disease also to be considered in this way. Also. And therefore, he told that as aconite will send them on never again, either rapid or permanent cure in patient, a quite calm and disposition. He gave an example over here. So, genus epidemicus has to be considered that island therapeutics, HGLN. And here, genus epidemicus told very nicely, genus epidemicus about that, about the so many genus epidemic fever, epidemic fever. Here, he, he told about the chapter in genus epidemicus, time is not permitting. No, so I have told her earlier, the no, so already have discussed the diet and regimen, and is very important factor for us. What are the diet and regimens? The genus epidemicus, Mark Darcy's, you please read out the Mark Darcy's. When it corresponds to the genus epidemicus, like every other remedy, it is affected as prophylactic. When there is a prophylactic, obviously it is raising the immunity. And also, please read out the diphtherianeum in AFLN books or ACLN books. It is read out the diphtherianeum. Diphtherianeum also is protected. And he also said, Othar has used it is 25 years as a prophylactic. Othar has used. Who is using this? That ACLN using this. 
uh, and profile acting and has never known second case of hip failure to occur in family uh, in a family after it has been administered the profession is asked to put it in the test and publish uh, uh, okay sir so uh, I, sorry i'm uh, okay, sir, sorry i i am like okay. no, no, this is the conclusion 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 this is my conclusion please please, uh, please. i conclude we have lot of lot of experiences lot of experience lot of journals by which can claim that it is a protective phenomena is there by which can there is the protective why me as the protection of the disease why we are constantly conferring the protecting of the disease by the way of individualistic treatment constitutional treatment by the no source obviously there is a phenomena to raising the immunity without which we can modify the susceptibility that morbid phenomena can be morbid susceptibility can be is coming into normal coming to normal so my conclusion is that so there are a lot of examples i brought to you uh, it can be brought out but the time is short homeopathy medicine strengthen the organism it may be capable of defending itself and do without the producing the side effects commonly so such treatment provide more ecological approach to curing infectious diseases since it aids the body's natural homeostasis without suppressing the organism inherent to safe protective organism at the at the vaccines did at the vaccine does what is facing the lot of troubles going to the vaccinosis vaccinosis thank you to the bjn and company thank you to especially to the monish joint who inviting me for coming to this webinar and also i am thankful to all of you the total team inter team and my viewers i do not know how much you have, how much you have learned from my lecture at least i have given approach and appeal to you please read out your literature read out your text and read out your uh, books as written by master hennyman and other scholars thank you to you all thank you thank you to hello thank thank you thank you so much uh, akhilesh uh, uh, sir thank you so much for uh, imparting your wisdom on this uh, very important topic and i believe whatever you have researched out whatever wisdom you have shared on this particular topic it is proved to be very helpful if in uh, uh, the doctors and students go through again on this particular topic and see that how hard work has doctor has done on this topic our speaker and how beautifully he has tried to explain on this topic so i once again thank you sir for being here on this homeopathy 360 platform and share your experience okay. just be associated with us uh, our webinar is not ended up we will take the question answer session in the end meanwhile uh, i invite dr anit uh, on the stage uh, dear doctors uh, let me introduce you dr anit acharya dr anit acharya is a assistant professor department of materia medica i can the scene dr. hello doctor sorry sorry please sir this screen screen how come i am i'm going to do i'm going to do change that one it just let me introduce dr anit and so that she can start her uh, webinar okay. so dear doctors dr anita acharya is assistant professor at the department of materia medica and uh, she is from dr mpk homeopathic medical college jaipur and today she is going to share his knowledge on the kali group i felt uh, a little bit uh, <laughs> dr anish sorry for uh, giving you the my so state but believe me dr akhilesh content is so good and it is so important for the fraternity that i believe that it should be continue and uh, it should be listened by and i equally felt that your content is all uh, equally very important so you can have some extra time on this and please share your content on the topic okay thank you dr akhilesh thank and you. thank you sir so i Hello, I can't see the screen. Hello. So we will be starting with the Cali group today. And I've seen you all have taken the classes and the topics very seriously. That was pretty well because you all have taken a very, a very nice time in the lockdown attending the webinar. So earlier I thought to start with the presentation, but now I started 
I have a uh, different idea about starting the Kali potassium group. So when we are talking about the potassium, uh, it is quite interesting. Like what is about the Kali group? And in the Kali group, it's not mere the learning the physical characteristic symptoms or the particulars to which we are giving importance. The mentals hold an equal value too. And sometimes we are thinking like, uh, what are the mental symptoms? Now, how we can find out what is Cali patient like? So that is a very obvious question. And because whatever we are uh, studying, it is like we want to apply it, obviously. So in the clinic or when we are observing, like Dr. Hanneman said, observation, a physician should be a keen observer. And before I go ahead with starting the potassium slide, I just want to give a picture of a patient. Suppose a person is visiting to your clinic. So I'm welcoming uh, all in a half hours early. I didn't welcome the students or the clinicians who are attending the webinar. So uh, let me tell you, I will be just presenting. If I'm visible to you all, I will be presenting a short, like, a small type of play, you can say, uh, how a Cali patient will be like. Now, Cali patient will be a very tough job for the physician to handle. And why? Because the first word which defines a Cali or potassium is a close personality. Like, for example, if you're sitting in your clinic and you are waiting uh, and the patient enters, and supposedly that is a Cali. So what will be the characteristic feature? So the first point, if the patient enters your clinic, the patient will sit like this, heading backwards. Now, well, it's not mere when a patient is coming to your clinic or approaching you, and the moment he will say something, you are able to find out what the patient is or the picture of the patient. Now, sometimes the gesture, the way he sits or the way he has an expression also favors the prescription. So in the Cali, in the Cali potassium, what happens? The patient is a close personality. Look at my hands. It's a close personality sitting back, not leaning towards the doctor's table. He is leaning backwards. Why? Because he is a close person. The one point which should be in your mind, the Cali is a close personality. He does not want to be very friendly to especially the stranger. So what happens? You keep on asking question, how are you? So sometimes now whatever I'm doing, I'm just getting you, uh, giving you an idea of number of the mental symptoms, which all the Kali's will show. It can be Kali bromatum, it can be Kali carb, it can be rest of the compounds of Kali. So what happens like doctor, I'm fine, but I, I grow very uh, full of anxious. I am very anxious. Why? I don't know. I don't know what's happening, but uh, whenever something happens to me, I just startles. Like, like for example, if you're sitting and someone enters, you will get startled. Startled at everything. So the startling, anxious. So that anxiety will be visible even when you are observing the patient. The, com the very commonly ringing of the hands, ringing like this. So that is how we study in Metro America. The patient is having fidgety hands. So this is fidgety hands. So fidgety hands always does not mean that the patient will be having a tremors and moving off and on the hands. It can be like he is unaware and he is like wringing his hands. At the same time, when you start asking about the patient, uh, what are your problems? What are your complaints? So Kelly will start like, doctor, I'm fine. I don't have any problem. I only have a backache. So a few months back, so he'll be giving you history. Uh, this is my problem. So if at all you would like to be an intelligent physician and you would like to interrogate like, tell me about your mental symptoms and what is your usual temperament. So Kelly will have nothing to do with his temperament. He will, he will obviously speak to you 
Doctor, I have a problem with my backache and it would be better if you treat my backache. I don't have any issues with my mental problems. I'm fine. So this is how he will, he is quite rigid is in behavior. Kelly's rigidity is often very evident from his speech and also from his gesture. So, and when he will speak like, I was fine a few years back when I changed or when I, I was being dropped from my, uh, where I was working from. And when you say, why, why have you been dropped or why did you left your job? So for that, he will speak like, like everything was fine, but the head of the, or the owner of my company, he wanted us to work for a whole lot more of time. And, uh, on that we used to do something means it can be an example for example we were asked to do something or some part of the job in which it was not a, a thing of morality my moral was not allowing me to do it was beyond my ethics so this is not wholly he will be telling about his complaints he will be gradually that is a very gradual his history. It's not in a one go that he will be telling about his entire history. It's a very gradual history. So this gradually, when you are interrogating, Kali is always giving you a tough time describing his ailments. So this was why I started because not going on to a monotonous way of starting the slides and uh, telling you about the whole Kali, it was a bit very short way which we will be going ahead. So now, since now maybe I will be able, I was able to grasp your attention. Now coming to the slides. So what actually how we would be going? We will be going brushing up quickly whatever you have been studying. I uh, suppose uh, means hopefully you all might have studied in your material medical a lot about the Kali's it's quite interesting personality so here in the today class webinar what we will do is slide uh, we will uh, start with a uh, potassium characteristic features then few of the important features of very common prescribed remedies and lastly we will go how we can relate or how studying Metra Medica can be related to our research. Why? Because research is equally important. While we are studying homeopathy, obviously it's aim of all of us to make it and it is actually an evidence-based science and we should move ahead towards the research too. So that will be at the conclusion how we will conclude this slide. Now going ahead with the calcium or the potassium. Now whatever picture I just gave in the beginning as we will be Moving ahead, we will be, uh, you will be getting more clear idea about what we discussed. Nakali is a potassium, and in the Arabic, its mean its meaning is alkali. The same chemical and physical properties you are aware of, the atomic numbers you are aware of, its silvery white appearance, and actually the meaning of Kali, this is only to get just briefing it out the chemical and the physical property. It's an alkali metal and uh, have been isolated by Humphrey Davy, and the name is potassium by the Latin potash. Now, the name potassium, why the word potassium has been coined, it is meaning actually the ash, 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 and that has been extracted with the water by the ash of burnt wood or tree leaves. Fine. Now the occurrences, the Kali, as you all know, the potassium is uh, present in the form of ionic salts. It reacts, it's very reactive and it easily reduces. It is 20th most abundant element on 17th on earth. So quickly, we'll just go through this. Just for your knowledge, how it's occurs is just a brush up. You might be knowing it. And it's uh, potassium constituents about 0.2% by mass and is about eight most abundant in the human biological system. Lot of enzyme, amino acids, even the 
blood pressure has been regulated so the physiological action you all might be aware of about the potassium now this is how a food high in potassium is just uh, for your information and this is sometimes how it is important because sometimes when we are advising a patient we add an adjunct like this is an adjunct or this diet can be taken if you feel like the potassium loss is there or deficiency is there so as an add an adjunctive diet you can add these edibles or the food as an advice now the physical characteristic it's a silvery white soft metal with second least density second condition it can be obviously with soft it can be cut with a knife and have, when exposed to air it undergoes tarnishing it's highly reactive and reducible now it belongs to group 1 of periodic table now coming to the periodic table here itself after this slide there is a, a how we in chemical characteristic we have been studying the uses it has been used in the npk fertilizer along with the nitrogen phosphorus potassium is equally important then these are the uses used as an additive dyes leather tanning this is just for for brushing up potash has been soaks for preparing of the soaps and used as a sedative insecticides now quickly we will go for this biological sodium potassium pump is quite important you uh, all have studied it in your physiology class too that how the sodium is pumped out and potassium ions are pumped into the cell so uh, that is very important physiological action and the health hazards deficiency okay so uh, coming on to the absorption it's absorbed from the small intestine now what is important i'm just going to that so that in short we can learn about the kali now showing the periodic table now it's not only the chemistry we are dealing with i'm showing you the periodic table whenever we are studying a mineral group or an elements obviously by now you might be aware that we go across a periodic table why because in few of the books by dr shalton dr sankaran they have very beautifully described then how the position of a particular element in a column or a row holds the importance or they have a different theme of that and based on the theme it makes us easy to find the characteristic feature of that particular element like for example studying a periodic table is yet another a very vast topic like kali group is a vast topic it's very difficult to finish it in one hour it's quite difficult but we'll just go through a quick revision and we will just go to have a clear picture of the kali so that while departing while uh, discontinuing the class at least you should have a picture of kali and next time if, if you are accidentally meeting an kali person you are able to find out that this person yes obviously there are some characteristic of a kali group <clears throat> now here just focus on the potassium <clears throat> now here it's a column 1 and coming to the fourth row now when we describe our periodic table just quickly now it's usually by dr sankaran and shalton they said that if it belongs to a first row it talks about the existence second row talks about the fetal the life of fetal third talks about the identity fourth <clears throat> fourth talks about the security fifth row this i'm talking about the rows okay <clears throat> now the fifth row talks about the performance then subsequent sixth about the responsibility and seventh row talks about the letting go factor so in few of the books you might be seeing so here when we talk about the fourth row it is basically about the security now all the elements in the, this whole row they are seeking towards the security and so when uh, we are talking about the potassium it is the potassium is seeking the security and security of what the patient of potassium or a kali group is generally having or it's looking for a security especially 
from those around him. And those around him means especially to his or her family. Now, he is a very family-oriented person, the potassium. So when the potassium, the position in the periodic table, the column one shows that the potassium has, or he knows that he has a very secure life as long he's with family. But he thinks that he's incomplete without his family. He has a somewhat clinging attitude, not for someone else, but towards his or her family. So a dependency comes in Cali towards his family, and there he's, he feels that he is quite secure when he is around them. So this is a theme which we can uh, find out from the position of the Cali in the periodic table. And with this, we will move ahead with the mental symptoms. And we will discuss how the mental symptoms of this Cali, it goes with other compounds of the Cali. Now, these are the homeopathic remedies, few of well-known prescribed. Out of these, few we will be discussing because rest of them, based on their compounds or the minerals, it will be easy for us when we are knowing the Cali features. If we are knowing about the Cali features, it will be quite easy for us to find out about, say, for example, the Cali iodatum. If we are aware of the iodatum, so Cali features will be matching with this. And so this is how in the uh, subsequent uh, slides we will be discussing. And it will be easy for you to find out any of the minerals over here, which is a compound of Cali, and uh, how the physical characteristic or a mental characteristic can be found out. So in the whole of the Cali's, causticum is a polycrest remedy. And on short, it is a Cali in itself. Now, it's a vast since causticum. It will take another one hour to understand the causticum. So in this slide, I have missed the causticum because uh, it will be not fair if within the Cali, we'll try to cover what the causticum. So keeping in that mind, rest of the Cali, we will be trying to finish in this class. Uh, now coming to the common features. The common features, before common features, let's start with the mentals. Now the common mental features. In the mental features, this picture, I suppose if you all have watched the daily soaps or not, I don't know, but this picture <clears throat> of the lady reminds you, if you have not seen that soap, Balika Vadu, or if you missed that uh, soap, don't mind. Actually, this uh, the picture is being depicting the lady who is quite critical. Like, for example, I just you just you explain. Like, there is a small child, and he's born and brought up in a very orthodox uh, family. Orthodox family who are quite sticking to a religious belief, or a quite society fearing people. Now, a lot of our parents obviously ask her, like, don't do that, don't do this. Why society is not accepting? This is not acceptable by society. Okay, don't do this. Don't do wrong to people. Why? God is watching. Now, everyone grew by uh, listening to all these things, like, God is watching. So, sometimes, <clears throat> few people, like, brush it off. It's fine. God is watching. But sometimes, in the family, where the small children have been praised or have been uh, um, punished for not following a certain rules. So when some family has a, su a, such a strict uh, or say authoritative atmosphere, the child grows and have uh, imbibed in his mind that this is only a right. So for a Kali group, only two shades exist, either black or white, nothing gray. So that is a Kali group who have brought up in an environment which is a quite conservative family. And for him, there is right and wrong. And it is very good if you are right, because if you are wrong, you will be punished 
or there is God who is watching. So a guilt factor always runs behind a carry if he is not following norms of the society or any religious belief. So this is how the background of a Kali goes like. So what actually happens when a person is brought up in this atmosphere, so he grows up a like of rigid in his behavior, quite rigid. No, I can't do that. It is against my, my uh, moral values. I can't do that. The example I was giving in the uh, early, start, starting of the lecture, it was how the patient was rigid. I can't do it. I can't do. Like you all have uh, heard in Hindi, there is a phrase, Praar jai par vachan na jai. Or if I, in English, I would like to say, like people say, uh, it's better if I break than to bend. I can't bend. I would prefer to break. Break. Okay. So this is how a people or a family uh, maybe elders or maybe the child who has been raised in this atmosphere has grown to be a rigid person. So now when he's holding a family, he's, he shares the same rigidity what he inherited from his parents or from his grandfather's or atmosphere. So he became quite rigid, everything. So what happens generally, Carrie, when a person is rigid, obviously he is not a very fav favorite of all. The people don't like a person who is rigid in his ideas, right? So the Kali is not at all being favored by his family members. So at times what happens, the Kali says, it's okay if my child doesn't love me. It's okay if my family don't love me. I, I love them. I have done a lot of things for them. But for getting admission of my child, I can't bribe. I can't give the donation. Why? I have the money. But I can't give donation. This is against my ethics. I can't. So this is how the rigid behavior of a father that is denying any donation or any anything which the child is desiring or the family is expecting a father or the working member or the exile skeleton or the access of the family to do. And he, he is just denying it. So why? Because he's rigid. But yes, the second point is duty bound. He is duty bound. It is my duty. It is my duty to take care of my family. Even though they don't like me, it doesn't matter. But it is my duty. I will do my duty. <clears throat> so that always goes around him. And what happens actually, the rigidity of Kali, the behavior of Kali, as being perceived by the members of the family, is that he feels like uh, he's not loving. Look, he's not taking interest on, uh, for uh, our good. But what happens actually, the Kali is having deep regards. He's duty bound, but he does not, he's not expressing. Kali is not expressing. He has a tendency of just hiding his expression. He can't. He can't be weak in front of his child, even though he's he loves him or her a lot. Then comes a feature of anal retentive. Now this word anal retentive was being given by Sigmund Freud. You all might have heard about the Sigmund Freud who was a psychologist. So what did he tell about anal retentive? He told that uh, when a child grows, the child has a different phases in his life. Like from different phase, he had divided into five phases, starting with the oral phase, the anal phase. Now, in that what happens, a small child is allowed for a training, toilet training. He can't pass, in, when he's a small child, he can pass in front of others. But not when he grows up, he has to control himself. So what happens, his family is telling, now this is not right, you can't do this, you are grown up a boy or a girl now. So what happens, the child has a habit of retaining that and retentive. Even he has a urge to pass the stool, but he retains it. So that he thinks that I'm a grown up. Now I can control my urges. I can control that. So this is how not merely on the mental, le physical level, on mental level too, the child feels like now I'm a grown up. I know that I can also have 
uh, control over myself. So Kali from start, this is called a inner retentive when a child retention. So when you will be studying a psychology, there is a phase which phase is called stick to that particular phase in their life. Like inner retentive, even the, the, the child grows. He thinks that I have a full control over my emotion. So that inner retentive at the early age has grown or taken the form of a rigid person. A person who has a control over his or her emotion. It can be any sort of emotion. So that is how inner retentive have been said by Dr. Vithalkas about the Kalins. Now, a narrow-minded personality. A narrow-minded personality is a person, obviously narrow-minded, you are aware of the narrow-minded. They are thinking only a very, have a very narrow way of approaching things. Only a concern about whatever they, their wish like or their opinion is. Sometimes Kali has a habit of forcing upon their opinion about the others. The thing that whatever they are saying that is right, that is only correct. You can't deny it. Then comes the fastidiousness. The fastidiousness is something with, uh, it's, it's brought up and you have heard it in a lot of medicines, say it in arsenic, say it in natural mure. So when we talk about the fastidiousness of the Kali, Kali has a habit of doing everything a very methodically type of. So he, whenever he has to do any work, because he is so duty bound, he gives his full attention and full hundred percent on doing a particular task because it is a duty bound. He's bound to his duty. He can't deny he has to do and he enjoys that. Even though everyone is leaving, like uh, an em employer is working and he has seen all of the rest of the friends have gone away or they're just passing time. But for him, he is bound to his duty. He can't leave his desk. He has to finish the work. Now he has to do because when he has committed, he has to do. So he is the Kali is the man of words. If he has given words, he he can't waver off. He can waver from his whatever commitment he has done. A very critical in his approach, a very critical personality. Now look at the lady's vision, his her, her eyes, how she is looking. A very critical. They have a way of approaching things. Obstinate person, obviously, is obstinate. Ziddi, whatever they are saying, you have to follow. Whatever he, they have thought, they, you have to follow. That goes with the obstinate characters. Quite apprehension, apprehensive in that it's a full of fear. The Kali has a full of fear and anxiety. Fear, fear. He, he's seeing ghosts. Fear. He's seeing uh, death of his near and dear ones. Fear of any impending disease. A lot of fear is there in the Kali. A quite over sensitive people. A sensitive, sensitive to any slightest draft of air or any slightest touch. They startles easily. Startles easily. Someone is coming, they're startling. All of a sudden. Why? Because they're not welcoming any new person. They are close personality. They are not welcoming any new person coming. Aversion to society. Quite aversion to society. Why? Because they are family oriented people. They want to live in their family. They are happy in their family, the environment. They don't want any stranger to be included and neither they want anyone to know about them. So they have aversion to society. It's like a close type of personality. So this is what the common mentors of the Kali's are. And Coming quickly to the Kali Bichromicum because rest of the features we have discussed. So Kali Bichromicum is uh, from the physical characteristic. Like in Bichromicum, we have seen the patient is quite spotty, having a spotty discharge and stringy discharge. This we are well aware of. The Bichromicum means stringy, going into a thread. It's quite sticky, like chewing gum you have seen. No? So something is gluey. So that carries like for few people who are usually they are referred to by Pramikam as a bureaucrat. They are busy telling about their themselves, not their family, not their personal opinion, only about the work schedule, what work they are doing, what is their business. So that goes with the properness. 
that keep regular hours. Regular hours means conformist. Conformist is someone who sticks to a particular schedule. They have to wake up early. Like you usually see in your family, you have to uh, sleep at a particular time, say 9 o'clock. Then early morning, you have to wake. You have to start your work. So whole family is going to follow the same time schedule. So that is keep regular hour. The Kali Bipromicum has is sticking to a particular time, sticking to a particular routine. Not exactly time, it's a routine. So they are person who sticks to a routine. They have a rule book in their hands. They go according to rule book. For them, if a particular thing is no, that means no. They are not going to change it for any person, though. No. He or she may be a part of family, but if the rule says they will abide by the rules, they are the only person. Like if going by the road and the traffic signal is it's red, now no one is uh, stopping. Everyone is passing by. He is the only one who will stop and wait till the light changes to green. So this is how the rule book. He goes according to rule book. You can't wave him off from the rules. And definitely Kali by Promicum, he likes to be family. So family is, like we say, he's a family-oriented person. So Kali is a family-oriented person. The Kali by Promicum is a family-oriented. Everything he wants to do in a routine way. He is happy to be in a routine. If something hinders his routine, routine, so he does not feel like, he does not feel that it's, it's fine. The Kali Car, the Kali Carbonicum, this is a prototype. When we talk about the Kali group, generally we talk about the Kali Carbonicum. The Kali Carbonicum, he is a mind rules the emotions. His mind is very sharp. Whatever he's thinking, he is following it. You, you can't ask him to, even though he likes something, for example, he wishes to go out, he wishes to spend time, or he, he likes someone. But if in his rule, if in his family nobody likes that, or he have been raised in that sense of uh, mind, uh, mind or thought, like you can't do such things. You can't like anyone else. You can't go against the wish of the family. So he will never show his emotions. He has a strong mental control. And sometimes when he is like trying to control himself too much, so he has a fear of losing control and that's when the Kali weeps, that when the Kali is broke. Broke into tears like weeping, but that doesn't mean that he'll follow or break his rule book or break any rules from his rule book. Quite dramatic personality, the person who goes according to the moral values, have a strong sense of duty and obviously the Kali carb and the Kali has a weak solar plexus. That means when we talk about the Kali, like till now it would be it uh, was uh, quite clear, like that someone in the family who is having a strong position, who is the head of the family, who is making rule for rest of the people in the family. So that means he is the axial skeleton of the family. Obviously, access axial skeleton of the family, and when the axial skeleton is Rigid. Obviously, the things easily break down when coming towards stress. Stress is there, like you are used to, you are having backache, or you are having stiff neck, or you are having stiffness in the spine. What happens? You are not bending. I am unable to bend. My spine is so stiff. So that same happens. The spine is the weakest part of a Kali, particularly the lumbar region. So sometimes like in cervical, and when we talk about calcarea calf, it is the cervical. The cervical muscles are weak. Here, the lumbar vertebrae is weak part of the Kali. And also the, the emotions are felt in the solar plexus, especially when a person is in his abdomen. He has a butterfly in the abdomen out of anxiety. The Kali is full of anxiety and startles from the knee, knee stretch. Yeah, there is a very interesting symptom in your Metro Medica you have seen. The person of the Kali cup startles easily, especially when the feet are touched. So that means, that doesn't mean like 
you can correlate with the mental symptoms of the carry like the person of the carry he has a moral values he does not go for like for working or making everything fine the people used to do anything which is against they have not make any rules for themselves so like touching feet now touching feet is a very nice gesture you are paying respect but sometimes what happens touching feet people are not so emotional they are not adding emotion it's just like they are gratifying or they're showing that other people that they are actually respecting uh, but they are not so generally the callies uh, callies don't, don't prefer they don't prefer the people should respect or show a false respect towards them and neither they do the same thing so if you are able to relate the mental symptoms it is quite easy for you to understand the physical symptoms also so here in cali the cali struggles easily especially when anyone touches its foot or anyone touches him or her particularly it's about the soles of the feet and sometimes there is a talking to themselves like feature then comes a cali bromatum now the bromatum is generally full of guilt when the word bromatum has been added of the compound with the cali it is full with guilt factor now it is quite possessive personality the cali bromatum is a quite possessive personality the person who desires nobody in the family is happy with the cali yet he wants no one to leave him that is why he has a desire for company but he does not want sympathy he does not want anyone to cry for him why because he is proud he is proud whatever he is doing he is proud he is happy but he knows that the people are not admiring him why because he can't go according to them so he has a deep love for his family he is quite possessive for them but at the same time he is he is a duty bound so it's like he ha he wishes to be in a company but does not want sympathy and also it's called unassertive and assertive is a term for the cali bromatum like sometimes you are struggling and you struggled a lot in your life uh, but you did not confront with any people okay but when you are seeing your family members be it your siblings be it your uh, children when you uh, see them they are they are also struggling you feel like i have not fought for myself but i will fight for this one. i'll fight for him so cali bromatum what happens he is so rigid he does not fight for himself even though sometimes he is having a uh, people are going against him but still he is not fighting for himself even though cali is having a personality he can fight for anyone you have seen in the costicum costicum go and fight for anyone but here in cali bromatum the cali group the person is unable to take a stand for himself or herself then comes cali hydroarticum this is a family oriented person the person who is very strongly dependent upon the family and he thinks that he has to do everything to keep his or family close together so he is quite devotedly attached to the family and if at times he is unable to do it he feels quite angry quite angry on especially towards the children he is quite abusive towards the children if they are not following his way so it's a family oriented person of the cali hydroarticum now the cali mure the cali mure in one word if we define cali mure since muraticum if we go in different books according to jan shorten which he described that the muraticum element says that the mother feature the caring mother the duty bound mother so cali cali muraticum is a duty bound mother who is working and whole day and night only to take care of the children why because when they grow up they'll take care of me so this is not always that she wants everything is returned cali does not want anything returned it is his duty which he gives the prior importance but yes in cali muraticum the child, the person especially the mother is very duty bound towards his family 
Now, quickly we go with the Cali Floretum. I'll just give you a theme. The Floretum floor, obviously a person who detach very easily. So when the floor get, uh, it's having a compound or with the combination with the Cali, the Cali Floretum, that means the Cali, though is a duty bound, is a family oriented person. But since floor has an opposite feeling of breaking of the relationship. So what happens, uh, like few people you have seen, they often complain. I have lived, uh, we had a very happy life, married life, and we stayed for such a long time. But now I don't have any reason for leaving her or him. I don't have any reason. I'm just leaving her. Why I don't have any reason? Because yes, all through the year, all in the future, I'll always be a fatherly figure or always be a very protective for the spouse or for the children like that. So in the Cali Floretum, the person takes time and later on he is ready to break the relationship and rather is not committal and they don't like to be tired anymore. So that's the Cali Floretum. And Cali self, Cali self is Shishkar's pulsatella. And but here in Sulfuricum, when we talk about the Cali Sulfuricum, its theme is the patient wants to be always done, is very committed towards its partner, to its spouse. That is a theme, the short theme of Cali Sulfuricum. As we go on to the mental symptoms, the duty to be good to their partner, and they are quite committed towards their partner. They can go to any extent to uh, uh, support their partner or to be with him or her. In Cali Force, there is a sense of quite attachment or commitment. So this is how a Cali commitment, when it goes with the floor, when it goes with the self, when it goes with the phosphorus, or phosphorus is a quite friendly behavior. So this Cali has a duty towards communicating with people or keeping people together. So this is how a Cali's rigidity is a slight breaking. And now it has a good communication ability with the people around, but at the same time, he considered that it is a duty of this person to be having a good business. So in business, if it is to be very friendly, being very friendly, so he abide by that rule and he follows to be in a very good relationship so that he can have a very good business. So that shows the Cali has also a materialistic way of approach. Now the Cali Natricum, in this Cali Natricum, the person of Cali's have a feeling that he should enjoy life to the fullest. And for enjoying life to the fullest, he does not avoid his duty because he's taking that duty also seriously. So this is how sometimes not everything you have to remember. It's sometimes a very core theme you have to keep in mind. And along with the other features like nitricum, fluoriticum, self, phosphorus, you can easily guess out what the mental symptoms can be. Every symptom you don't have to learn. Now, that was all of the mental symptoms. I hope the mental symptoms uh, or the picture of the mental symptoms might be quite uh, evident to you all. Now, appearance. Now, appearance, like Cali Bipromicum, is a chubby personality, uh, quite resembling of the Calcarea. Carbonicum is like a thin and wiry, wiry like, wire like, lean thin. And with the edematous appearance, eyes around the eyes, particularly upper eyelids. And then most of the Cali group has a very bony face, like in the picture which I have shown you, the lady. So it has a very angular or a bony face. Generally, we say the people are squares. Squares means a rigid person. By mere looking at the face, you can find out the patient is a quite a very rigid, very lean thin, very angular face, a sharp cut face, and upper lip is thin, thin lips. Like whenever you are very strict, you are closing lips. You know? It's like especially the upper lip is thin. It reflects. A uh, lack of emotionality when you are when you are upset. So what happens? You tighten up, tighten your lips. Now in Cali Brumatum, it's like a mild, beautiful, like with a scary looking eyes. 
calibre matter because it's startling. No? So that sometimes the expression is being uh, visible on the face. Now, physical generals. The physical generals are chilly. That its patient is right-sided. Debility is quite weak. Then desire for sweet and aversion to meat. The pain is stitching. Mostly calories are having a stitching type, which aggravates on the motion. Here is the weakest. We have described it. How the backache gives way, or is the weakest part of the calories and profuse sweat, aggravated night, and mostly the ephebrile condition. The physical characteristic you all are aware of, we'll just discuss the differentiating. Like all the calis have stitching and shooting pain, the cali bipromicum has a periodical. Like we say shifting. When we describe cali by it's a spotty, it's a stringy, it's a shifty. Now three S of the cali bipromicum we are aware of. So the mentals were quite uh, clear. Now coming to the characteristic features, like Cali Club, it's a di uh, darting, uh, stitching type of pain. Fosh is having a burning pain. Like if we uh, talk about the Cali Ars, Cali Ars is also having a burning. Why? Because of the arsenic element. Like phosphorus is having a similar, the Ars, uh, the phosphoric element burning. Then coming to the discharges, the discharges of Cali is thin and acrid. Now, bichromicum obviously is ropey, yellowish, stringy like. Carbonicum is thick yellowish, Kelly iode a greenish, the phosphorescent iode giving the greenish or yellowish color, and a mucopus. Calimure is having tough mucus, and what is important is the milk like white, thick, thick milk, the color, and the consist consistency is a tough mucus. Hemorrhage, then the hemorrhage, there's a metrorrhagia more prevalent in calicarp. Cali bichromicum is, is epistaxis. Cali carb and cali mure along with califos has hemoptysis. Now, when we talk about the hemorrhage, there is also another compound, cali nitricum. And then cali nitricum has a dark ink like blood. So, that dark ink like blood is, is the marked feature of the cali nitricum, which is well known for the asthma. In the nervous system, since cali are quite nervous, they get irritable very fast and it affects the nerve. So there is a chorea like or convulsive like state, though quite evident in a cali bromatum, the chorea. But few like cali carb also have the jerking of the limbs. Cali bromatum is a fidgety hands. And the rest of the cali carb and cali neurotic also has the convulsions. In the edema, the cali carb has a bag like swelling. The bag like swelling that tribes of edema we are aware of. So in the carica, it has a bad leg swelling over upper eyelids. And along with that, there is a, a cali iridum with a pulmonary edema. Time modalities, usually we have the early morning time modalities between 2 to 4 a.m. That in the calis, when we talk about 2 a.m., it is cali bichromicum. Carb has a 3 a.m., phos has 3 to 5 a.m. And the sulfuricum, it's like a uh, pulsatella, so it's having a similar feature which is aggravated at the time of the evening. Lack of vital heat. The chili, calicarb, and calipos are sensitive to cold air. Iridium and sulf, they crave, they are hot, they are more towards craving open air. And calibichromicum to a lesser degree, not much, very much marked. Now, a short description of few of the calis other than the usual symptoms like calias for calias what is important is it's a very good panic remedy they get panic very fast having a palpitation having a fear the fear of heart disease is a quite marked feature of the cali arsenicum so arsenicum has the arsenic and as you all know has a fear a restlessness so that is uh, having a common characteristic of the cali arts, but it has a fear of heart disease. And especially for a panic attack, we say it's panic attacks for any event or any unwelcome situation, it is going into a panic condition, high blood pressure is there. So we can think for a cali arsenicum. And uh, there is uh, anxiety, full of anxiety. Cali, so not all the symptoms, I'm, I'm just highlighting the few very important symptoms like Cali bichromicum. Obviously, the discharges we have been discussing, very well known, and even research have been done over the Cali bichromicum in the sinusitis condition. 
and uh, punched out. Yes, punched out and perforated ulcers are marked feature of the carry by chromicum. The carry bromatum, the fidgetiness, the convulsive state, the depressing of the mind is quite common, especially the night terrors and the somnambulism condition of the carry bromatum. And uh, more importantly, there is an echinae, the echinae at the puberty or the echinae which is after effects of the masturbation. The calibramatum is a wonderful drug. And if at all, it is like calibramatum if we have given. And for the deeper affections, we can go for thuja and sepia. Then in the calicarp, all the symptoms we have been discussed, the weakness, perspiration and the backache are the trios. The weakness is there and the perspiration along with the backache, which is marked swelling of the eyelids. So these symptoms are marked of the well-known Cali. Now, rest of the symptoms like Cali Muir, well-known for the action on the use taken to and with the catarrhal inflammation. As we all know that Cali have the fibrinous exudate. They are not having a transparent discharges. They're having fibrinous exudation. And the Cali nitricum droxical conditions uh, well aware, well being given for the asthmatic trouble, the Cali near nitrogen. Cali force, just like the pulsatilus, they have as, um, sorry, Cali force is a nerve tonic, uh, Cali sub is a Schischler's pulsatilla. And Cali force is a great nerve remedies, insomnia condition. Uh, the researchers have been quite being done on the Cali force in the condition of insomnia. And obviously, it's a wonderful drug for uh, the suspected malignant tumors. Then comes the Cali cell with the yellowish mucus discharge and profuse discharges, later stages of inflammation. And particularly for the desquamation, like the psoriasis condition, we can think for the Cali cell. It has a wonderful action on the epidermis. So profuse uh, desquamation in any of the clinical conditions, we can think for Cali cell puricum. Now, this was all about the Cali self. And lastly, I would like to tell you, we talked about the research because research is equally very important. So this slide is why it is important because few of the researchers, only just a few of the headings of the research I have shown so that it should be clear to all of us, like not merely studying Mishra Medica or not merely uh, going through the patient or clinical study, it is also equally important to raise our study and to go for the analysis, to go for the reviews and to give uh, very good papers in homeopathy it requires to prove it as an evidence-based science. So it's our duty for all of us to correlate our knowledge of metrometric or any subject which you feel like you find very interesting. You can go for any subject and try to present it in the form of research. So we should not ignore our research it's equally very important when we are studying our community we want to make we, we should make it uh, or progress in a path of evidence-based science so this is what is very important is the clinical evidence so sometimes why this pyramid is shown this is how you have to step forward towards the top systematic reviews now whatever is our interest whatever we are studying we can go for the case reports which is considered to be a baseline evidence then to a case series then above its observational study and more is a gold standard randomized control trial it can be rct it can be a, a double blind or triple blind study and later or the topmost is the systematic reviews which is considered to be on the top of the clinical evidence and the meta-analysis. So that is how uh, the way we have to approach getting knowledge and how we can go through a uh, approach towards the clinical evidence. These are few of the researches which have been done on the Cali's. This only I have highlighted so that whatever you are studying, whatever you are observing, you can produce it in the form of papers or rational papers and you can publish it in a uh, well to do journals so that uh, the other people or other students or the clinician can benefit from your knowledge or from your observation so there are a lot of studies uh, which is being highlighted over here like potassium bichrome on the tracheal secretion in critically ill patients now there is a mental fatigue cali force action on the mental fatigue was done Ciboric dermatitis, lot more of these interesting 
researchers have been taken on the Cali. So these entire, all the researchers which are being displayed over here, and this was, uh, this is how the abstract, or all the abstract has also been added. So that whatever you are studying, you can just inculcate it in your research and increase the productivity. So with this, I'm ending the Cali group. I hope I would, uh, was able to give a picture of Cali and we look forward to meet you all again. Thank you so much. If there is any queries, you can kindly give your queries or you can mail me. Uh, thank you, Dr. Anil. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, I believe both the speakers are able to hear me. Hello. So, uh, dear doctors and students, uh, this is from our two speakers to you. Uh, today, we have a very fruitful discussion on, on, on two different topics, and we believe that the experience of both the speakers will definitely help you out in understanding both these topics. Uh, both the speakers are still with us, so I'm looking forward for question and answer. So if in case you have any query, any doubt, any questions from your side, I request you to please type in the chat box so that I can put it forward to the speakers. Meanwhile, I thank you our speakers for sharing such wonderful knowledge on two different topics. And uh, we feel glad that on this Homeopathy 360 platform, we have uh, such speakers and definitely your knowledge will boost the confidence of students and definitely help the practitioners in the practice. Okay, we are getting some very positive feedbacks also. Uh, the audience wants to have some, uh, like, uh, such lectures in nearby future also, so definitely uh, Dr. Manju, we would like to have more such sessions. Today, I felt uh, that uh, the session would, would extend it, but I don't feel regretted because I feel whatever the knowledge both the speakers have shared, it proved to be very fruitful to you all. So next time, we will try to take up uh, this thing. But today, the content is explained. I feel that proved to be very helpful to you all. I'm still looking for your question and answer uh, questions, please. Type in the chat box so that I can put, put forward to the speakers. So, uh, dear speakers, we have one question. Uh, Dr. Nikita wants to know what is the meaning of sublata causa tolator effect? Us. Uh, Dr. Akhilesh, uh, I request you to open your mic. Your voice is not uh, audible. Can you open your mic? And I believe Dr. Anit, you are also able to hear me. Dr. Akhilesh, kindly open your mic. Please open your mic, sir. Uh, we, I'm, I'm getting some queries for you. Please open your mic. Uh, it is open now. Open now. Why yes, yes. Now, yes. Now it's fine. Now it's fine. Okay. So, uh, one Cosa, question is for you. Uh, Causa sublateral tolerator effectors. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, sometimes we need, we uh, have to remove the cause, and thereafter automatically effect will remove. That is related to the hygiene. That is related to the hygiene and uh, some obstacles which causes the hindrance in the process of the cures. So before that, before scissor effect or scissor causa, that means fundamental cause, the sine, causa sine cure non, fundamental cause, it is known by the effect of the disease as pyrazine and the disease we know by the effect of the disease. So if you remove the effect, automatically cause will come. But before the clinics, 
before to take the case we should have to inquire the case is, uh, there is, is there any problem in respect to their hygiene is there any problem in respect to the diet there is any error, error in the diets so these causes causa sublater toluter effectus it is it is italian term and italian phrase to translate it is remove the cause automatically effect will come but you do not believe on that homeopathy do not believe on that but sometimes we have to believe because of that it this produces indians in the process of cure and now uh, <coughs> you go through the carol danham you go through the uh, bogar and you will get everything about it the specific term and um, you will get and from that i have bring, brought it and explained it and explain it because it is necessary for it prior to take the case even during that case you have to inquire is there any obstacles that may produce suppose a patient has been brought to you a doctor uh, just i am feeling trouble i was in village i have been uh, transfer or i have been uh, admitted i have taken admission in a college but i um, uh, do not find any proper places i am remaining in a places where uh, it is unhygienic and uh, the um, the room is very unhygienic the room uh, the water supply is very unhygienic i think from that i am suffering from the travel and diarrhea from where on enquiry obviously in acute disease you will inquire that uh, doctor since after shifting from the village to the city the congested city at mumbai or calcutta or lucknow and suffering from that or on enquiry you find that the water is the source due to which the patient is suffering just it correct it you advise it that you please take the potable water drinking water at least you do not take from the well from other people are collecting probably that might be the cause and you advise him that after uh, and along with you may give medicine there is no need of medicine at all because sometimes yes. it will cause so uh, if you yes. correct it and then the patient will recover so the yes, cause yes. Of lying here that i yes I, sir yes sir yes sir yeah, i think sir. so this I, this is very required because so therefore i have told you a doctor has two role two role one is a health advisor the knowledge of hygiene and community medicine other is the clinical approach clinician and therapeutician so therapeutician sometimes subordinate to the uh, if you are giving a medicine so it is a case of an asthmatica it is a case of pulsatilla it is a case of arsenic but you are not you are not correcting out that water so if you are giving medicine but you are even then the patient is getting that water that polluted water it will not get away understand so therefore it is yes, sir, yes. that that is yes, I, i think now you are satisfied So, yeah, yeah. You you explained so well, Akhil okay, sir. Akhil okay, sir, I'm getting more queries for you. Can you please uh, highlight those one also? Uh, one doctor uh, is asking, uh, Doctor Avaste. I get the query from him that uh, he wants to know that at this current pandemic situation, along with arsenic and brandy alba, what approach should be considered more appropriately? It should be the genius epidemicus or the clinical. So thank you for the questions. Now the arsenic alba. while the government of india is department so they advisory that arsenic is a uh, genesis medicus and they are they were telling that it is a uh, it is a genesis medicus that can prevent the disease and they are after uh, some uh, amendment they made and they now it is a uh, immunity raising medicines because they have lot of studies on that point that arsenic has a history to produce uh, increase the immunities and now they are giving telling that is immunity raises but in respect okay. uh, in, in now i am telling you that but according to the rational approach the rational approach should be on the basis of finding out the case observing the case examining the case by so many cases you can find out the genetic features so brainia is a rational approach i said the brainia is a rational approach the brainia what uh, the nomina has finding out in their places and examining the 45 or so many cases that brainia is come so brainia would be the genesis of that particular area and it would be the purity for the affected persons understand so this is the necessary now the question is the immunity reserves of the arsenic already ayush department and the central council research on homeopathy has sent a proposal to different colleges whether you are distributing the arsenic okay very good to keep the statistics and keep the records of the patients 
Either is raising the immunity or in spite of getting the arsenic, the patient are uh, getting exposure, uh, even then exposure but not getting effect. So in this way, research has to be made in order to establish how the immunity is raising in the yes, yes. But yes, sir. anything, we should not be prejudiced. I have told you, yes. the prejudice yes. is not the rational approach in that respect. Rational approach, but I have told as per Ramadan, as per other text, and that is the rational approach. Constitutional yes. treatment and individualist treatment is the rational approach. Okay. Yes. Anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you, Klesa. So you explained so well, and I believe that Dr. have got the answer in this. Now I have a question uh, for Dr. Anit. Uh, Dr. Anit, one uh, doctor wants to know. I have a query from Dr. Rana. He wants to know Kali sulfutum and pulsatilla, the main difference between the mental of both the remedies. If in case you can put some difference on that. Uh, your voice is not audible, Dr. Anit. Uh, can you please open your mic? Yeah, is it? Yes, now. Uh, yes. Okay, when we talk about calisulf and pulsatilla, they hold a very common physical features. So they share it. But when we talk about the mental symptoms, actually the pulsatilla is a very docile kind of personality who are seeking sympathy. They are uh, having a changeable mood. And when we talk about uh, the calisulf, the calisulf is also changeable. But actually, when it, we talk about the cali, so Kelly has a temperament which does not seek or wants sympathy. The Kelly self does not seek sympathy, unlike Alcatara. So this is a marked difference uh, between both of these remedies, how we can differentiate it out. Rest of the changeability is the same, though the pulsatilla has changeability for different reasons, and the Kelly self has a changeability for a different reason, the reason why, because in Pulsatilla, the person wants to change the company of those who he or she is with because she has a fear that the person with whom she is living will leave her. So if he or, he or she is going to leave her, it's better to leave him before, then only comes the thought of changing in Pulsatilla. In Cali self, it's a more committed type of personality. So it's on a chronic level, it goes toward, towards the changeability. But in a very short, if we try to differentiate out, we go for the seeking sympathy, which can differentiate better between both the Cali self and Pulsatilla. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anit, for explaining so well. Uh, about the difference between the two remedies. I have one more question for you by Dr. Shiali. Uh, she wants to know about the anxiety of Kali Foss. So can you put some light on that? Yeah. Kali Foss is a generally for brain fag and neurasthenia like condition. So, like sometimes it is, uh, we have seen that is an insomnia condition. Sometimes when over exertion has been done because of maybe heart surgery or too often using your brain in some work, a tedious work. So because of that, if there is a, a neurasthenia or a fat condition, we go for the caliform. And if it's associated with the anxiety or the anxious nature because of the nerve breakdown, we say nerve breakdown is causing the anxiety, we go for the caliform. OK. Thank you, Dr. Anil. So we are pop up with many questions, but because we are limited with the time. So uh, what we can do, uh, dear doctors and students, if in case you have further queries, I request you to just, uh, uh, you can write to us uh, on our email ID, or you can have the questions draw directly to the speakers. So we will soon share you the information, the contact details of the speaker, so that you can have the answer directly. Meanwhile, uh, I just want to. Uh, before concluding the session, I just want to share my thanks to both the speakers for having or making this uh, webinar so wonderful. Uh, a heartful gratitude from the Homeopathy 360 to both the speakers for share, for giving this platform a precious time and updating you all. On the behalf of Homeopathy 360, I would like to thank you for giving your valuable time. My heartful thanks all, also goes to the all the learners, not just those who have been with us for the last uh, two, three hours, but also uh, 
those who have been watching us and following us on the social media accounts and the visitors on the www.homeopathy360.com website. Uh, before I signing off today, a very, very important note of thanks must also go to the people who are behind of the Homeopathy 60 team uh, for having such a wonderful webinar. Yes, it's a Homeopathy 360 team that works day in and day out to bring you premium quality of uh, webinars to help you out in your further studies. So with this note, dear audience, stay connected. Be, uh, be join us tomorrow for new speakers and new topic. And meanwhile, I just request our speakers that they remain connected with us and in nearby future, please keep guiding the audience likewise for uh, in such a manner, sir. So Dr. Anit and Dr. Akhles, thank you so much. And dear audience, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So dear audience, if in case you have further uh, queries, kindly visit on www.homeopathy360.com in order to know our upcoming events and for any further information. Or you can, if in case anyhow you missed any part of the webinar, so you can visit on our YouTube channel, Homeopathy360, and can have the recordings of our previous and of this webinar. So thank you so much for being here. We will meet you tomorrow with new uh, speakers and new topic. Thank you so much. Thank you, speakers. Thank you.